Tonight, will the QB be able to lead the Red Blacks to their second win of the season and exact revenge from a loss to the Elks a week ago? Well, Taylor Cornelius hopes the answer to that question is N-O, as he hopes to give Elk fans something they haven't seen since week 18 in 2019, a home win at Commonwealth Stadium. Hello, Canada, and welcome to the CFL TSN Saturday night edition between the Elks and the Red Blacks. Caper Nest alongside Matt Dunnigan and Milt Stiegel. And let's get back to Nick Arbuckle for a moment here. Look, the Red Blacks need this win. We all know it. But is Nick Arbuckle the guy to get that done, Matt? And I hope so. CFL needs our <laughs> quarterbacks to stand up and, yeah. and, and be accounted for. And Nick Arbuckle's one of those. It's hard to figure out why he's been on his uh, fifth different team second time in Ottawa in, in such a short period of time. He's got great arm talent. And uh, I, th I see a jump in the Red Blacks offense when he's on the football field. I'm not sure if that's saying a whole lot because of what's <laughs> happened with Caleb Evans as of right. late. And he's seeing ghosts. But I think Arbuckle's an upgrade. And I think they need a big time in the nation's capital, Milt. I believe. I believe Arbuckle can get. Why are you I'm looking at me like that? <laughs> I hope you're right. <laughs> I, I believe. I believe. And I think this is going to be his coming out party. I know I, I, I uh, like things haven't it. gone as planned since he left Edmonton. There were such high hopes for him uh, being a elite quarterback in this league, yeah. and he hadn't lived up to that. But I think this is his opportunity. Even beyond this game, right. they have an opportunity. I know it's a long shot to make the playoffs because seven of their eight games are against East teams. So they have that opportunity. But it starts with this game and. Mm -hmm. I believe. I hope so, Mel. I, I, I believe in Taylor Cornelius, too. Yeah. yeah. So, no, much, so, so much I got him on fantasy tonight. Okay. And that's We're why you not, believe in Taylor. about your sorry, fantasy sorry, team. Sorry, I'm so sorry. done with all these fans. It's not about your fantasy team. It's about the people at oh, home tonight and watching it's this exciting. game. You know what? We would just go for great quarterback play on both sides. <laughs> that's it. That's all that's we're it. really Thank looking you. for. That's it. All right. Consistent. Currently, the Elks are favored by two points in this game. The over-under set at 47 and a half. Let's take a look at the same game parlay ticket that the gentleman put together tonight, courtesy of FanDuel. No Davis Sanchez tonight, but he was kind enough to send us in his picks. He likes Kai Loxley with the first what? TD. Mm, but like if it. it hits, guys, think yes. about if this hits. Yes. Matt, Taylor Cornelius over the 230 and a half pass yards. Got to yards. bring it tonight. Milt, I know that you're on these anytime touchdowns these days, so you like the Ottawa D and special teams. We got Deadman back in the, the mix Deadman here. Deadman is That's alive. That's right. We didn't even mention that. If all three selections hit, we are going to pay yeah. plus nine yeah. five. Two, two. Think about that at home. Happened. Are you putting the tickets together? <laughs> Are we really doing it this time? Yes. We're really doing this it after it, the break. Baby. We're going to send you Edmonton and join Rod Smith and Glenn Suter. Cindy Triple of St. Albert, Alberta. This is your chance to win big thanks to Save on Foods. Million dollar touchdown to win. If the kickoff is returned for a touchdown, you could win groceries for a year. If two kickoffs are returned for a touchdown, then you could win a million dollars. Let's get you to Edmonton and join Rod Smith and Glenn Suter. Thank you, Kate. We welcome you to Edmonton on a Saturday afternoon in late August, the back half of a home and home series and equally critical for both of these two teams. We'll put a positive spin on this right now, Glenn, yeah. because the winner of this game can get to within four points of a playoff spot. But yes, it's a critical time. Quarterbacks are a big part of the story as usual, especially for Ottawa, because they have Nick Arbuckle a month and a half after making a deal with Edmonton. They get him now and he makes his first start for the Red Blacks. Yeah, just start number 15 for Nick Arbuckle, about five different teams. Second time with Ottawa. This is another opportunity 
opportunity for him to prove that he is a keeper and a starter in the Canadian Football League. I think Taylor Cornelius has grown each game. He's added running to his resume. That has helped, but they need a win badly. Yeah, Chris Jones certainly does. A rougher start this time around in Edmonton. Keeps tinkering with that lineup, but encouraged by their play in the second half last week in Ottawa. For Paul Apolise, well, his first ever game as head coach of the Red Blacks came here the season opener in 2021, and they won it 16 to 12. So there's that positive memory. And Devontae Dedman, that's something positive too. He was the special teams player of the year in the CFL. Let go by the Miami Dolphins, so back with the Red Blacks. He was their top player in 2021. Ottawa will get the ball to start this game as Sergio Castillo kicks it off. CFL on TSN on Saturday underway and a shorter kick too. That is taken by Kenny Onyeka who was up in that kick return coverage. So on comes Nick Arbuckle came off the bench for Caleb Evans and back to back losses including last week against the Elks. Yeah, 7 of 13 for 85 yards when he came off the bench, but just felt like Paul LaPolice, felt like Nick Arbuckle gave them the best chance to win and processes defenses, knows the league well. And, you know, the one challenge for him is it's only been a week or so, just over a week, that he's had the number one reps in practice with the starters. He started the first three games of the season for the Edmonton Elks. Now starting against them for Ottawa and handing off Devontae Williams on the carry and gets up across the 45, close to a 10-yard gain. Oh, speaking of former Elks, Jacob Ruby comes back that offensive line. He'll go head-to-head -head with Jake Ceresna, who's played very well over the last three games. So we'll watch that matchup. Their top receiver, Ottawa, is Jalen Acklin. 765 yards targeted 71 times in that offense for the Red Blacks. Starting lineups brought to you by Expedia. As it's close enough on that carry by Devontae Williams to measure. Ottawa had a good start last week at home against the Elks. They took a 12 9 lead into halftime and then Edmonton took control of that game three straight possessions in the second half all leading to touchdowns and there's really looking forward to see Devontae Dedman back and get some of these punt returns going kick returns miss field goal returns I mean what a dynamic returner back in the lineup back in the Canadian football league didn't work out with the Miami Dolphins but we'll take him because he can fly absolutely he is such an explosive player on the returns little play fake and throwing it nearly intercepted on that first down Matthew Thomas nearly had it in his hand so it's second down four sacks 15 defensive tackles last three games for Jake Ceresna so that's why I want to watch him in the interior of the offensive line Hunter Stewart and Jacob Ruby up against Ceresna we'll take a look at that matchup there's Niles Morgan four games for him he's led the team in defensive tackles in all four and the leader in defensive plays for Edmonton is their safety Scott Hutter that's a bit of an issue when your safety's leading the team in defensive plays. Second down now. Throwing, and it's knocked at the line of scrimmage, and a late flag comes out. It is Ja'Kai Polite, who started the season with the Argos, getting his hands up on Holding Nick Arbuckle. Ottawa number 61. That penalty is declined. Third down. And the left tackle flag, Ucumbre Williams, for holding, but it doesn't matter, decline. The Red Blacks are going to have to punt it away. Yeah, one of the things in this game is the... The Elks won the toss and deferred because of the wind here this evening. And that means that Ottawa, they took the ball and they can take the ball again in the, in the second half. And so punting now the Red Blacks and Richie Leone and it does bounce before going out of bounds and heads out just inside the 25 where Taylor Cornelius had a great game, especially in the second half last week against the Red Blacks in Ottawa. Cornelius going 16 to 27 for 208 and a couple of touchdown passes as well in that game. Yeah, I, I like what he's done with his legs and adding that to, to what he does 
to attack defenses and break them down. He's making quicker decisions when it comes to running the ball. You and I saw that here against Saskatchewan two yeah. weeks ago when he ran for two touchdowns. Here he is handing off. Ante Milanovic lead prey. That, that's tough sled right up there up front. Ottawa keeps him to a limit of just two yards. We well, look Tony, at the, sorry, Tony Washington is, is out at left tackle, so Martez Ivy will take that spot. He was the right tackle, and that will be played by Andrew Garnett. Rookie in his first year, six foot five, 325. Their best receiver, of course, Kenny Lawler, but I think the secret weapon, and maybe tonight the difference maker, will be Kai Loxley. They can use him in a lot of different ways. Such a versatile player for these Elks. Loxley, number 10, also a backup quarterback. Second and eight, Cornelius throwing over the middle complete, too. We were just talking about him. There's the receiver. Kai Loxley, not to be confused with the quarterback, Kai Loxley, in a gain of 21. Yeah, I just, you know, I just think he's he's such a dynamic athlete, and the more they have him and the more they have him healthy, the more they can use him in different ways. Nice little bang right here. Try to get to the outside, fake like he's going to run the out, and then bang back into the middle, and Taylor Cornelius hits him right between the one and the zero. Nice throw and catch. Get the thing started offensively for Edmonton. In his first year out of the University of Texas, El Paso, Kyle Loxley. And a first down across the 45 Elks. Milanovic Litre again. Trying to pull his way up across the 50. We look at the Red Blacks defense for this game today. Lorenzo Malton tied for the league lead and sacks off the edge. He's got eight so far in the 22 campaign. Pete Robertson is the guy he's tied with in Saskatchewan. Frankie Griffin is back in the lineup off the six-game injury. They're excited about that. Damon Webb, Ohio State. Big play in the Cotton Bowl 2017, if you remember correctly. Yes, and played for the Riders last year at field half. So in for Ottawa. And the pass by Cornelius is just knocked away by Patrick Levels in coverage there on Dylan Mitchell, one of the newcomers, and a good play by the strong side linebacker Levels. How about the composure from the veteran, six-year veteran Patrick Levels to, to just, you know, be in position, make the receiver look like he's open, and just sort of a blind turn to catch up, stay on that shoulder, tip it away when the ball arrives. Devontae Dedman is back for the <laughs> says Patrick Levels. He's got fresh legs. It's too early to yeah. try a corner route on him. Good talker, too, and good returner here in Dedman with his first since coming back to the CFL, but he doesn't get a chance to as that one rolls out of bounds just outside the 20 of Ottawa. Each team has had the ball, had to kick it away. Ottawa. Arbuckle coming back on. Back in Edmonton on a very windy day here at Commonwealth Stadium right now in the first quarter. The Red Blacks are going with the win. Yeah, Ottawa won the toss. I, I mentioned off the top, made a mistake there. Ottawa won the toss and deferred, and Edmonton decided to play defense first. So technically, Ottawa can take the ball to start both halves, but Edmonton can have the win in the long quarters, the second and the fourth. Second possession Arbuckle. Off to Devontae Dedman. Great returner, but they've used him in the past as a receiver as well, and he gets his first catch since coming back and sets up second and short for the Red Blacks. Well, and this is, you know, a simple road to get him involved in the offense. He'll know it a little bit. He, you know, he's... He's familiar with it, so it's not a, a big leap that he doesn't need a lot of practice reps. But I already noticed that Edmonton is kicking away from him in the opening yeah. kickoff and their first punt, trying to keep it out of his hands in the return game already. That could change field position. Often a punter will shank a kick, trying to keep it away from the returner. Second and two after the Deadman gain, and they get a first down straight up. It's the other Devontae on this offense. Devontae Williams with his second carry and that's good for a first down and a gain of five. But a five yard average for Devontae Williams. Again, William Powell out of the lineup due to injury and he hits that hole nicely right between the tackles. That gain by Devontae Williams. First down. Look out. Oh, and Williams got it back and Enoch McConzo had it time. 
perfectly. Sticks him for a loss for the Red Blacks. Yeah, he's starting. He's starting to get it, isn't he? Like this is this is a I believe game three for McConzo, and and he's starting to figure it out. I mean, last week against Ottawa, he had seven, seven of these, where he got the takedown, he got the tackle, and that was just great instincts to read the screen and fly to the football. Second down at 15. The Ottawa 30 after that loss. And Aaron got a deep ball intended for Ryan Davis and just goes a bit too far as we welcome viewers on TSN 3 who are watching golf to this game. Commonwealth Stadium and it's still early with the Red Blacks and the Edmonton Elks. I thought Nick Arbuckle could have Maybe not run for the first down. He could have was close. He would have been a one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. But he had room to run. Richie Leone standing back. Speaking of special teams and returners, this is Dylan Mitchell. They have high hopes for him as he gets it up across the 30 after a good punt of 59 yards by Richie Leone. So Taylor Cornelius early in this game coming off a very good game in Ottawa trying to get the Elks offense moving in a 0-0 tie in the CFL on TSN. Edmonton's offense was slow out of the gate last week in Ottawa but in the second half they took off Taylor Cornelius ended up 16 for 27 for 208 but he had some big plays and used his legs as well. Yeah, I would say probably his most consistent game and once it got got it rolling and he's brought the balance he's led the team in rushing in three out of the last four games and they scored touchdowns in their first three possessions of the second half the run away with the red flags deep ball here. We've seen anything better than that. Stretching out, hauling it in, and a huge gain for the Elks of 54 yards. He went and got this football. I thought this was overthrown by about 10 yards, and he tracked it down and then straight lays out to pull it in. What a great catch by Kenny Lawler. Wow. All the way down to the Ottawa 25 play fake rolling right Cornelius throwing again into the end zone and that time Lawler's the receiver he wanted but not close enough that time it'll be second down. So going right back to 89 after that big play. Man that was some kind of catch to stretch out like that and then protect the football from hitting the turf one more time folks I mean catching the back half of the ball keeping it from touching the turf securing it as he lays out that is outstanding world class that's a world class athlete making world play. class indeed and, and just throw another one on the pile for his resume what Lawler can do under pressure getting away for Milanovic Litre but it falls incomplete and it's looking like a field goal situation now for the Elks after that one big play to Kenny Lawler David Foku thought he was the intended target on that last throw. <laughs> he he kind of leaked away from the protection and the ball kind of zinged by him. But what a great catch by Kenny Lawler. I mean, that might be catch of the year. I mean, you know, there's been a, a lot of great ones, but. Well, among the other candidates would be him for in here back, back in week two against Saskatchewan. Yes, in the back of the end zone. Sergio Castillo, 22 for 27. This try coming from the 32 and a half. By the way, Brian Burnham's on that list too. Oh no, no, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. He had a one-hander last week against the Riders. Castillo bumping it through, and thanks to that one big play, a 53-yard pass. Sets up the Elks for the first points in this game. And now we have a late flag thrown by the referee Andre Prue. The 
in discussion with Chris Jones. Stone. Trying to clarify what's going on here as Paul Lapolice looks for an explanation. We'll, we'll, we'll see this get sorted out and then we'll come back. As it stands now, we got a 3 0 Elks lead. Nick Arbuckle had a brief stay with the Edmonton Elks after being traded there by the Argos last year. He started Edmonton's first three games. And he had two touchdown passes and eight were intercepted, ultimately giving way to Trey Ford and later to Taylor Cornelius. As eventually Chris Jones saw fit to trade Arbuckle away to the Ottawa Red Blacks who dealt for him after the injury to Jeremiah Masola. Had a lot of stops in the CFL, hoping to settle somewhere like Ottawa, handing off. And that's uh, Jackson Bennett. They start scrimmaging at the 40. Might have picked up a yard there. But yet, since backing up Bo Levi Mitchell in Calgary, he's certainly moved around a lot in the CFL. Yeah, you, you even go back to his college days. He was only a couple of years in junior college, then went to Georgia State, then it was Calgary a couple of years, Toronto. You know, it's it's been a lot of stops. Now, there's a good and a bad with that. The the, the bad is what? Why is he keep? Does he keep moving around? Why do teams not just settle in and make him the guy? That's the bad part. The good part is he's learning from a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different offensive minds. Second down and eight. Oh no! And that one is complete near midfield. First catch for Jalen Acklin. Are they saying no? They're not. They're saying it hit the turf and. And that'll be it on the third down and long now the punting unit to come on again for Ottawa. Yeah if, if I'm La Police uh, I might challenge this a little bit and go after this matchup. That's Deron Carter out there playing corner. He's played a little safety you know him as a receiver back in his early days in the CFL. But I, I might go to that matchup with the top receiver in the league in Jalen Acklin against Deron Carter on the corner. So incomplete. Leone standing inside his 30 as the Red Blacks have to punt it away again still not able to get anything established offensively that's been us. Ottawa number 13. This is a five yard penalty. Still third down. The big problem for Ottawa especially in recent weeks. And a time count violation there for Leone to push them back five more yards. Dylan Mitchell back but rolls out of bounds after a 51 yard punt back to the 23 of the Edmonton Elks. Can we go back and look at it one more time I, again I just, and again I, I, I kind of lost it up here the I, highlight of this game. <laughs> this this is this is an outstanding catch again world class athlete making a play for 54 yards laying out protecting the ball. And I can't watch that enough. The leading receiver in the Canadian Football League last year with Winnipeg won a Grey Cup ring and was a high price free agent acquisition by the Elks and plays like that make you understand why. Kenny Lawler handing off first down Milanovic Litre met by a wall by the name of Avery Williams who drives him right back on that first down play. Yeah you mentioned him as a top uh, free agent of course and yeah one of the top paid guys and, and look at the season he's having 757 yards that's that's the clutch money catches there he's got 16 of them 200 yard games this season some spectacular catches that one against Saskatchewan just phenomenal and I I think he just topped it already tonight second and nine Cornelius another deep ball finds an open receiver again another big play for the Edmonton Elks that's uh, Mitchell 
as said, just recently signed by the Elks out of Oregon. Yeah, Dylan Mitchell, you know, and I think right now both quarterbacks are trying to figure out the wind here. I mean, Taylor Cornelius, if you don't throw a real tight spiral, the wind's going to catch it. And that's why Dylan Mitchell had to come back a little bit to the ball. 45 yard gain, but certainly Taylor Cornelius has the arm strength to put it way out in front of him. But the wind caught it. So 45 to go along with that 53 to Lawler. Swinging it out. Milanovic Litre. And he's tripped up, shy of about the 44. Set up a second down. So a couple of big plays for Cornelius in the game. Of the biggest difference, really, between these teams so far. And they're doing it into the wind. Second quarter, they'll be going with it, and because of the final three minutes and the timing of the second quarter and the and the fourth, they're a little bit longer. You're right. That's made those passes by Cornelius that much more impressive. Throwing into at times a strong gusting breeze. Second and five at the Ottawa 36. Blitz coming. Gets knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Looked like 58. Bryce Carter was the one who got the hands up. The force a third and five and Castillo will come on to try another field goal against this breeze. Yeah good timing on this jump by Bryce Carter getting a chance to play off the edge and you know when he was NFL was looking at him as a linebacker or fullback as a matter of fact and he's signs with Ottawa as a defensive end but the guy that at James Madison in his senior year had 22 tackles for losses that's that's in the backfield that's that's living in the backfield sure is Chris Jones he's gambling Castillo would come out then he went off what would have been about a 43 yard try against the wind instead on third and five Jones hedging his bets here and decides to go for it and that was well Given the coverage there by the Red Blacks and Ranthony Tejada, it didn't look like Milanovic leader Litre would have had much of a chance. Drops the ball, and they turn it over on downs, Ottawa football. The Red Blacks bringing back Devontae Dedman, their top player in 2021. With more, let's go down to Britt Dort. Well, I'm not sure if anyone's more excited about the return of Devontae Dedman than Devontae Dedman himself. He carries his team very close to his heart, and it turns out close to his head as well. I'll tell you what I mean by that. I asked him while he was down south trying to make a go in the NFL if he was still paying attention to his former team. He said, of course, and he was actually watching every game. On one occasion, he was even wearing his Red Blacks helmet while he was watching and would text his former teammates about what he was seeing, giving them some tips even. And when things didn't work out, with Miami's organization well I had to ask him was there any level of disappointment he said of course not everything happens for a reason Ottawa immediately reached out to have me back and I couldn't wait to rejoin my family head coach Paul Appelese echoed that saying he's the epitome of what you want in a CFL player his teammates play hard for him he's passionate experienced great with people great with fans and just a dynamic football player and I'm sure you two know if you've ever had a conversation with him he echoes positivity he really does, Brett, and to think of the impact he's made, Glenn, in such a short period of time with the Red Blacks. He only played in five games in 2019 and took the league by storm. Yeah, and he's, you know, when you take a look at an interesting stat, fastest to five kick returns touchdowns in CFL history, that's head of the best returner in football history in Henry Gizmo Williams, and Edmonton fans know all about the Giz, and Devontae Dedman got to five touchdowns faster than he did 15 games. He had two return touchdowns in five games in 19, and then last year he had three more returns, two punt returns and a kickoff return for a touchdown too, and many explosive returns that didn't go all the way. Second and 10, deep ball. Oh, it's caught by Nate Bahar, beautifully done. A nice pass there by Arbuckle. Yeah, you know, you know what? how this play is made I mean this is this is just great acting by Bahar who is not going to let the defensive back that's covering him know that the ball is about to arrive he just stays with his arms pumping as he's going down the middle of the field and Hutter is trying to trying to gauge when is that ball getting there and he's late 
That's a gain of 49. Nate Bahar, product of Carleton University, down to the 25 of Edmonton. First big play for the Red Blacks offense to follow up. Oh, right down near the end zone for Durbin Adams, who goes down just shy of the goal line. 24 yards, Arbuckle to Adams. And the Red Blacks are knocking on the door. The last one was on the receiver. This one's on the throw and timing from Nick Arbuckle to hit Darvin Adams coming right out of the break. You can see Darvin Adams just turns his shoulders, and there it is. And there it is for Nick Arbuckle in his first start for the Red Blacks. He gets in for the touchdown, but a flag is out with just seconds left in the first quarter. Two back-to-back -back great throws by Arbuckle. One deep to Nate Bahar. And that timing throw to Darvin Adams. Kick. Wasn't anything fancy with the route from Adams. He just found that soft spot, and the timing was so good, it was impossible to defend. Defensive offside, Edmonton. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Nick Arbuckle runs it in for the touchdown in his first start as a member of the Red Blacks and finally a very impressive drive all of a sudden for Ottawa capped off with this. Nice down block from that right side excuse me left offensive side right defensive side Lewis Ward on for the point after. And no he put it. Wide right. Lewis Ward really struggling lately. Missed a couple of field goal tries last week. Deron Carter throwing it over to the other side of the field and bringing it out for how far. I don't know. Avery Williams taking down Ed Ganey. It wouldn't have mattered anyway, but they decide to work it out after the miss by Lewis Ward for the point after so bittersweet Ottawa does get the touchdown and they do have the 6 3 lead here in Commonwealth. Slow start for the offenses in this game but really picked up late in that first quarter with a lot of big plays through the air especially for the Edmonton Elks but Ottawa with a big play on a, on a drive that helped them answer back and take the lead after one. Yeah, Rod, you know, I you know, take a look at that first quarter, and I, I think both these quarterbacks, Arbuckle and Taylor Cornelius, are trying to gauge the, the wind because the wind is swirling. There's some strong gusts, and even if you have it, like Arbuckle did in that first quarter, you still have to gauge it because it could take the ball and, you know, it could fly, fly over a receiver. But both these guys have made some big plays. It's Arbuckle and Cornelius in start 14 and 15, respectively. And if, I was going to say, in fairness to Lewis Ward, too, you made this point afterwards that it was swirling. They weren't just, he wasn't just kicking with the wind. It was kind of a cross breeze all of a sudden exactly. gusting up. And, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's swirling, it's gusting, and I think that wind pushed that kick wide. Hence the 6 3, not 7 3 lead after Ward missed that point after trying this windy day at Commonwealth. A short kickoff by Ottawa into the hands of one of the newcomers. That's Christian Salisbury. Running back for the Elks. And you can see the difference that wind is making because Edmonton had the same thing in the opening kickoff, which went very short to start this game. Salisbury had the ball. Yeah, those sky balls. So you kick it into the wind, it'll hold the ball up longer, and you can get your cover guys down there. Remember, after it crosses 10 yards, that ball is live on a kickoff. So you saw a sign of the strength of the arm of Taylor Cornelius on that 53 yarder to Kenny Lawler in the first quarter against the wind. For the most part, Cornelius should have the breeze at his back here in the second quarter to get things started. Now down by three. Blitz coming. Milanovic Litre. And grabbing the jersey to slow him down. He picks up just a few yards on that play. Andy Milanovic Litre had a very good second half, nearly 100 combined yards for the Elks in their victory last week in Ottawa. And you know Avery Williams didn't didn't like that. You know, he he, he went back and looked at that video and said, oh, I gotta start, I gotta start getting there. He grabs that jersey and he, it looks like there's a t-shirt and just does not let go till his friends arrive. 46 defensive tackles coming in. With Frankie Griffin back, back in the middle too. 
Second and 11. Over the middle. Oh, it looked like Loxley had it, but he dropped it. And with that, the Elks will have to punt. Yeah, they, they waited for Avery Williams to drop out of there. So this was timing for Ta Taylor Cornelius. There's Williams. He's going to drop, and then he's going to go with the back out of the backfield. And as soon as he does that, Taylor Cornelius knows that he can no longer drop underneath of his throw. So that's why he goes over the middle. And yeah, that's that Loxley should have got that. He knows it. So John Ryan standing back to punt it away. Go cover, go cover, go cover. Devontae Dedman gets to return a punt. Go. Here he goes. Here he goes. Devontae Dedman doing it again. First game back. Ball came out after he landed down at midfield. A 43 yard return, and they discuss it. It looks like they're saying the ball came out after he was down, spotting it for Ottawa. Ruling on the field is the ball carrier was down with contact. Will be first down to Ottawa after the TV timeout. So while the fuss about Devontae Dedman, there's an example. First chance to return a punt, and look what he does. Up near midfield, Brett Black's ball. On a team that really struggled to score points last year, this was their game breaker on special teams. Devontae Dedman, and this is against Edmonton in an Ottawa victory. That was one example of taking it all the way. Did it to the Argos as well. He had two punt returns and one kickoff return for a touchdown. Three returns last year, Suits. And he had a couple of returns for touchdowns in 2019. They're welcoming him back with open arms. As they go to Devontae Williams on first down. Well, when you're on a chart, on a board that we call them for television with Gizmo Williams yeah. when it comes to the return game, you just have to have your name anywhere near that name. That's high praise. And that is high praise. Now, there's not a comparison being made here. He's a dynamic returner. He's going to provide a spark. You've already seen it. First time he got his hands on the ball, they've been kicking away from him a little bit already. Well, Gizmo Williams, they know him well in these parts. Greatest returner in the history of the Canadian Football League, bar none. That's the standard. Let's take a look at, just to remind football fans about how great number two was, and there was no one better returning kicks in the Canadian Football League, but I would say in any league in the world when it comes to football, Gizmo Williams, the best. He had over 20 called back touchdowns think of that 30, that's incredible 31 total missed field goal punt return or kickoff return touchdowns you add them all up 31 unbelievable no one will come close I don't believe and, but Deadman has that one record with him fastest to five touchdowns in 15 games yeah he made an impact quickly and he just like he's done here in this game with one punt return it's given the Red Blacks very good field position to work with. They lead at 6-3. We're in the second quarter. They're going against the Breeze. They have it down near the Edmonton 45. And a first down complete to Adams. Second catch for him. Yet another one late in the first quarter down near the Edmonton goal line. That's, and I'll just mention, and I know I've emphasized this, it's been such a great year and such entertaining football all year long, but this is one of the great aspects of Canadian football, is that our return game is so important and so valuable. Players like Devontae Dedman get a real opportunity to be stars in the league. I mean, it's, it's a true third of the game, the, the return game. It really is. Got some dangerous ones this year, we've seen that. And now he joins. Second and four. And that's right back to Darvin Adams for a first down for the Red Blacks. Yeah, I like the way Nick Arbuckle's settling in here. You know, that deep ball to Nate Bahar, it looked like it kind of settled him down. He's, he's stepping into these throws. He knows he's got pretty good protection here. And takes a look. That looked like it was about his third read in the progression. Paul Lapolis says he's very good at that. He sees pitchers, is how he describes it. 
Down to the Edmonton 31. Arbuckle is six for ten for 90 yards in this game and handing off. No, faking it and throwing it and completing another one to Jalen Acklin inside the 20. And another Ottawa first down as Arbuckle goes to seven of 11. Again, rolling, rolling to his left after the play action fake. Arbuckles is able to throw across his body in the traffic, but accurate enough that the Edmonton defenders did not get a chance at it. He came off the bench two weeks ago against Calgary and again last week in the loss to Edmonton. Got something going here now with the lead, throwing again, completing again, down near the 10. That is Ryan Davis on the receiving end, a gain of nine yards to set up a second and short for Ottawa. Boy, I'm just, I am, I am staring down. I am staring down a, a matchup between Jalen Acklin and Durant Carter. I mean, they've been lined up head to head in that short side of the field for a lot of this game already. There's the last completion. Didn't go to it that time. Acklin was open in the end zone. Keep an eye on that matchup. We got a second and one here. Caleb Evans, who had been their starting quarterback, is now handling the short yardage. Did he make it far enough to get that first down? Doesn't appear so. No, oh, I that was Andre Pru, the head official, basically came out of that pile saying it's third down, so. Good search by the Elks up front. A more nerve-wracking for the head coach. Here we go. Evan stays in. They need about maybe a foot. He got that and more. That's a that's a first down. It'll be a first and goal for the Red Blacks as Evans lunges forward and then heads off for Nick Arbuckle. Yeah, and I don't think this team or organization needs to should should give up on Caleb Evans. You know, I think he's he's good young talent. Seen some real good things out of him. That Toronto win, he was outstanding in that game. And, you know, just very good athlete. It just sometimes it feels like I think for young quarterbacks that you're standing in the middle of freeway and the cars are flying by and you just you get lost in that easily. First and goal, Edmonton eight. Arbuckle stepping up, finds a receiver, Jackson Bennett. No. Oh. Jalen Acklin, excuse me. Down around the three. So it'll set up a second and goal as Ottawa gets closer. I'm just staring this down. Now, now in fairness to Deron Carter, he does have an interception this year playing in the secondary for the Elks. Here's the matchup. It's a little slant route, but Carter, I've been noticing, has been giving him a lot of room. I'm talking about 12 to 14 yards off of Jalen Acklin, respecting his route running ability. So Arbuckle comes off. Got about the two and a half. Caleb Evans back in, running out of shotgun. Second and goal. Keeps it himself. Hunter's on him, but he gets across the plane of the goal line for an Ottawa Red Blacks touchdown. Last week, Evans scored one on the ground as the starting QB. This time, he comes off the bench, and he runs it in to increase the Red Blacks' lead. Well, wow, there's this... You know, at first I looked at it thinking you're in shotgun, you're five or six yards away from the ball, which is now putting yourself seven yards away from that goal line. However, a play like that that develops with a fake to a wide tailback going sideline to sideline freezes the defense for a split second. Caleb, Caleb Evans took advantage of that. And that is his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. Giving up the starter spot to Arbuckle for this game, but capping off a nine play 56 yard drive that took six minutes. Ottawa was down early. All red black since. Halfway through the second quarter, another touchdown for the Ottawa Red Blacks on a nine-play drive. Yeah, I really like the way Nick Arbuckle is settling in after that deep ball to Nate Bahar. He's been precise, thrown against the flow here into a tight window, got it done, and then found his check down. 
Headed down at the goal line. Caleb Evans took over from there. And Ottawa now leads it by 10. And talking things over, Nick Arbuckle, Caleb Evans there. And the kickoff coming here with Christian Salisbury back to take it. The Edmonton 20. Back cracks. And then ultimately gets taken down by Ty Cranston. National Football League season getting closer. Kicks off September 8th. Thursday night showdown between the Bills and the defending champion Los Angeles Rams 7 Eastern 4 Pacific on TSN and CTV Canada's home for the NFL this is Canada's home for the CFL we got a game going on here in Edmonton Ottawa leading the Elks 13 to 3 Nick Arbuckle in his first start as a member of the Red Blacks going up against the team he started the season with so Edmonton begins Taylor Cornelius just across the 30. Milanovic Litre breaks a tackle and a better game getting up across the 35 again a six yard for the Elks running back. Well yeah and I, I like the balance and I like getting that you know when you when you look at Milanovic Litre getting as many touches as he had especially has especially on first down that's number six already tonight and gives Taylor Cornelius that balance and play action means more. Big but, running back in his fifth year out of Simon Fraser. But they, they, they teased us with the Lawler catch. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I keep looking at Lawler. He's into the short side of the field right now. Handing off Milanovic Litre again bolts his way up across the 40 and then looks close to he had to get to the 41 for a first down he does. As the sticks move for the Edmonton Elks along the ground. Yeah, and I mentioned that one of the things that Taylor Cornelius has done well in the last four games and how he's sort of progressed. He had against Winnipeg, he had 59 yard rushing. You mentioned the Saskatchewan game where he had 86. Against Ottawa last week, he had 47 on five carries. So you get Milanovic Litre involved between the tackles, and then he can pull that ball and get it out and run around the corner, RPO style. Pass coming. Which is run pass, pass off coming. for any new pass fans watching. On the first down, Got play him. action fake. Oh. And he looks and he finds a receiver, but no, it is dropped. Intended there for Chris Osekusi. And the play action fake looked like it worked to perfection, setting it up with the run, but it's incomplete. Oh my goodness. I, I just saw Kenny Lawler get in behind everybody Taylor Cornelius I thought he was loading up to go deep and hold it right there guys for a second there he is right there just lay him out but he doesn't he goes across on that crossing route he had a chance for a deep strike there instead second and ten try passing again the blitz and Patrick levels levels Cornelius takes him down as they were sending the house Ottawa's defense was levels with the sack yeah he, he really timed it up nicely sort of just kind of casually walking over to this side just casually walking in there bang he just times it up and hits it right off the edge again veteran savvy we saw the nice knockdown early in the first quarter I think it was the first series for Taylor Cornelius and now Patrick levels timing that blitz perfectly for his second sack of the season so Red Blacks defense standing strong and John Ryan standing at his 20. Deadman right near the sideline still finds a way to get some yards tiptoeing up the side there so Ottawa big play levels on the sack a couple of touchdowns and they have the ball back they lead Edmonton by 10. Paul Lapolis second season with the Red Blacks on the sideline and it's been heartbreaking especially this year given how close some of these games have been. Yeah you look at the defending champion Winnipeg Blue Bombers lost by two 
out of the gate in week one and then one possession. Those are all one possession games, meaning in one possession of the football, you can either tie or win the football game, and that's how close Ottawa has been. Now, there's still losses, and you are what your record says you are, as Bill Belichick said a long time ago. But the building. Jalen Acklin, the receiver, getting it across midfield for Ottawa, a gain of nine. And and keep in mind, they lost Jeremiah Mazzoli. I yeah. mean, they get Jeremiah Mazzoli, they start the season in those really close games. And, you know, when, you, when you're that close and you've lost your starting quarterback, certainly don't want to lose our buckle after he took a hit on that throw, but... These are two teams trying to keep the hope alive after very rough first pass of the season. Second and one right at midfield. Dropping back is Evans trying to trick him and they do. Bahar has it. They fooled the Elks in short yardage. And Caleb Evans comes in and makes them pay with that one to a wide open Nate Bahar. As they issue the three minute warning. Open up the bag of tricks. It's working for Ottawa so far here at Commonwealth. Knocking on the door again. Well, coming up at halftime, I wanted to do a behind-the-scenes tour here of Studio 6. We have an amazing 82-inch television, but they tell me I'm not allowed to shoot it. So I guess let's talk about football. Nick Arbuckle's <laughs> playing pretty good. We'll break it all down first half. You can see the TV. <laughs> 82 inch television. Impressive. Get the couch, get some snacks, sit and watch, talk about it at halftime, eat in the panel. We got something happening here for Ottawa. To Devontae Dedman in his hands, takes a pop, gets it down to the 20. That was after a big play and short yardage where the Red Blacks fooled the Elks and that pass to Nate Bahar. Yeah, Nate Bahar lines up as a tight end right here and then. It's a little fake by Caleb Evans, and Nate Bahar goes straight down the middle. No one covers him. It's just, I think Konar just reacts late and then tries to get there to make the tackle, save a touchdown. That's not his man or his fault, but he just realizes how wide open he was. Really did fool the entire defense for Edmonton. And on the next play to Deadman, Enoch. McConzo was in on the tackle and he is the injured player for the Elks now. McConzo is down getting attention from the medical staff. And you know the wind caught that ball on, on Caleb Evans or Bahar scores. Right. And, and he sort of double clutched it because it, it, it ended up coming out wobbly. Just softly put it up there. Exactly. Exactly. But you don't want to miss that one either because you got a guy so wide open and those are fun plays to do because you practice them pretty much all year long get a chance to run it you just hope that they work and do fool the defense and it happened on that short gain by Deadman they get to the 20 so Ottawa into the red zone for the third time in this game they lead by 10 they've scored a couple of touchdowns Arbuckle oh, he completes that to Bahar what a half Nate Bahar has been having still going loses the ball though and I can't see who got that ball Bahar working so hard to get to the end zone. 19 yards. But coughed it up. And still waiting to get a ruling. Well, first of all, the read and delivery from Nate, from Nick Arbuckle was outstanding. I mean, Arbuckle saw the pressure. He knew he didn't have a guy to block the pressure, so he got it out of there on time and on target. And then Bahar with the great second effort. They're still trying to figure out who's recovered this. Starting to flare, the fight over possession. Well, did they have it in the Ottawa recovered? Did they recover in the end zone? Very close to breaking the plane. It's Ottawa football. You got to wonder. They, they're still discussing it. Red Blacks offense and 
Elks defense remains on the field. It's in the hands of Shaq Johnson right now. What is it? What is that? How do the lawyers say it? Possession is nine tenths of the law. There you something? go. <laughs> something Ottawa believes in now. I, I'm pretty sure that's not the same thing. But yeah, I'm not sure. They're, they're trying to get help from the command center. And I don't know how you get it because it was at the bottom of a pile. And Paul Lapolis just wants them to make a decision here. Take another look ourselves, but it looked like a red black was sort of first to, to hit the the turf after it went down. Was it a fumble in the beginning? I mean, was he down by contact or or was the ball out the ruling early? Ruling on the field is there was a fumble. But Ottawa recovered the football at the one yard line as a scoring as a potential scoring play. The play will be reviewed by the command center. OK so they're close enough to the goal line so the command center basically has the green light to go ahead and take a look. So that was a fumble. There's no question that was a fumble. He was not down by contact before the ball came out. Now. Is there any definitive evidence here to overturn the fact that Ottawa recovers it on the one yard line? Balls out, knees weren't on the ground. That's what I said about the first person to it was an Ottawa red black O lineman. Ruby there, was down review, there. And Darius Sorocco. The ruling on the field stands. It will be first down on the one. For Ottawa. So Ottawa football indeed and a chance to increase their lead. Nate Bahar, three catches in this game, all of them very significant. He has over 100 yards receiving. He had one for 49 that was on their first touchdown drive. And of course, on that short yardage trick play, he caught it and then that. And then this touchdown, Ottawa Red Blocks. Well, and Caleb Evans with his second of the game. Yeah, and Rod, you know, those those Nate Bahar catches were big in, in a bigger pitcher way, too. Not just the yards, not just the first downs and setting up points, but the first one got Nick Arbuckle going. That first deep throw to Nate Bahar was really how the offense and how he settled in, and I thought his technique and throwing motion and all of it really improved after that, the confidence from that deep catch. Then there was the fake. Oh, fake on short yardage that he gets in behind to set up this touchdown. So, you know, big in the big picture as well. It's a good point. And it's a five play drive, 64 yards. Caleb Evans, again, Arbuckle, the quarterback, driving them down. And Evans with a couple of key plays, though, himself, scoring the touchdown. But yeah, the, the, the fake that you alluded to in short yardage that Evans executed, completing that pass to Bahar. So even though he lost his starting job, he's had a major influence in this game. Yeah, no question on the touchdown and short yardage here. Goes off that left side. And way across the plane on that one. And three straight touchdown drives by the Ottawa Red Blacks after they fell behind by three. All Ottawa since then. Well, this is an area that they really need to improve upon, and that's when they get in the red zone to finish. I mean, Coming into this game tonight at, at around 40%, consider like the BC Lions with Nathan Rourke were over 80. That's, that's an area where you want to take full advantage when you get into the red zone. The, the Elks are at 70% in the red zone. And now a real sense of urgency needed from Taylor Cornelius. Smiles for Nate Bahar and why not? <laughs> Game he's having so far. Zotta was about to kick off again. With Salisbury back for it again at the Edmonton 20. Christian Salisbury. Like he ran into his own man and eventually a red black wall taken down up near the 40.
Stars is home of bold originals you won't find anywhere else from the executive producers of power comes the return of the acclaimed prime drama exactly power book three raising Canaan now streaming on stars I don't know I'm not sure what I'm saying but it's Chris Jones' defense shut out Ottawa in the second half last week. But having trouble in the first half against that Red Blacks offense in this game. Now down by 17 points. Needed to get something going in his offense. Some heat coming. Shuffling it off. Milanovic lead track. And good yardage after the catch. Avery Williams takes him down, but not until he gets across midfield. Gain of 15 yards. I, mean, I think offensively, you know, this has been this has been the formula to get it on first down to Litre, whether it's running the ball or that little flip. Going tempo now, and they're trying to. I've been watching Kenny Lawler on the short side with Darrell Walker. I don't think Darrell Walker's even been targeted yet tonight. He has not been. You know, and you you put two dynamic receivers like that. We saw the big catch by Lawler early in the game. I, you know, I just surprised that they're just not feeding them the ball. And they tried to get it there on that crosser, and it's there they are together again, short side of the field. Getting late in the first half, minute and a half. Edmonton trying to close that gap. Cornelius is intercepted. Avery Williams has it. Still with the ball from Williams, and they're inside the Edmonton 40. So for all the work of that offense, some big plays from the Red Blacks defense too. And they could be set up to score some more before halftime as Williams is down. Yeah, he took a wallop. I mean, he took a huge hit when he's when he pitched out the football. But this this is this is now Taylor Cornelius trying to force it in to Kenny Lawler. And then watch, he pitches it just as he gets drilled by the offensive lineman. All right, all right, good. Walk it off. It certainly does set up Ottawa for points with lots of time. Patrick Levels dropping in there, and you can see there's just, there are too many Ottawa Red black defender. Now I think they should be working that short side of the field with Darrell Walker and Kenny Lawler, but you also want to make sure you're not forcing it in there. It was Martez Ivy making the tackle on Williams just after he had tossed it. So here we go. And on the ground, the Red Blacks down to the 35. Gain of three for Jackson Bennett. Good to see Avery Williams back up and that option quarterback take the hit pay the price to get it out and get some more return yards I'll tell you what though he was deep in his drop and that's why it worked because linebackers get that deep in the drop they're affecting the deep crosser last week was the first time Taylor Cornelius and starts didn't throw a pick got one tonight now one of the Red Blacks have needed a half like this trying to add to that lead oh, does get it. Matthew Thomas with the ball. And so hang on. Up to the 45. Things swing in a hurry in a hurry here. 41 seconds on the clock and the Elks have the ball now. Yeah, pedal to the metal. Taylor Cornelius has got to get out there, get a couple plays called, get field goal range at the very least. This is a great half for Nate Bahar and this is all he's going to remember and be trying to shake off at halftime here in 41 seconds. protect both tips of the football. One's got to be in the hand, the other underneath your arm. Edmonton ball. 41 seconds. Enoch McConzo, who was hurt earlier, was the one that forced the fumble on Nate Bahar. Cornelius. Onyeka's coming charging in off the edge and takes Cornelius down another sack for the Red Blacks. 
Got that sprinter stance. Going one on one on the newcomer out there and Andrew Garnett. And he goes up the field, nice swim move. The swim move with the left hand hits low and into that midsection, and then you swim the right hand over top. He goes around that corner in a, in a hurry. With the sack by Onyeka, loss of five. Edmonton second and 15. 20 seconds to go until halftime. More pressure on Cornelius, who launches it deep. And he has a receiver, guess who? One big play deserves another. And Kenny Lawler with another big catch to set up Edmonton for at least, at least a field goal shot. Yeah, just keep feeding Kenny Lawler and Darrell Walker the, the football. I mean, this is Cornelius getting outside and buying himself some time, but then at the top end of the route, back comes Kenny Lawler. 50-yard gain, three steps back towards the ball, beats the defensive backs to it. On two of Kenny Lawler's catches, 104 yards receiving. Two catches, averaging over 50 per. Now you got to look at, do you have time to take a shot, or do you kick the field goal and not lose this opportunity for some points? Timer, please reset the game clock to read nine seconds. Nine seconds. Chris Jones talked to the official. I saw him walk a little bit out on the field to talk to the officials there. To he got one second out of him. One second back. This game can turn on a dime, can it? Oh yeah, and they're gonna. <laughs> I think they're gonna take a shot. I mean, you can do this if you throw like the fade route. On time, if it's not there, throw it away. Make sure you don't lose the opportunity. Red Blacks look like they'd have a chance to add to the lead instead. Here comes Edmonton. Eight seconds. End zone look. Yeah. No, so they'll have to with five. That's exactly what you have to do. You, you take a shot, and if it's not there, in other words, this time the Red Blacks dropped into a zone, so they had a high guy playing on top of Darrell Walker there. So Taylor Cornelius said that zone it didn't we didn't get man to man so I can't just throw a fade to Darrell Walker throw it out of bounds make sure we can kick the field goal. Well it could have been worse for Edmonton the way this half was trending Castillo to come on now is one for one in this game. It turned what it looked like Ottawa had all that momentum going to add to the lead and then this when it looked like Edmonton would score. Well I see Akeem Bailey in there Avery Williams I'm not sure who got it. Davon Coleman It like, might have been Coleman right down Main Street. Big number nine coming up the middle. Oh yeah. And no time left in the clock if Tahada could just, Tahada. just, uh, just, oh, maybe, just get it. Oh. <laughs> what a half. And a great half. The best half of the season for the Ottawa Red Blacks. Do they ever need it? Nick Arbuckle and company. 20 to 3 is how this half ends. Let's go back to Kate and the panel. <laughs> I'm back alongside Matt Dunnigan and Milt wow. Stiegel. And Milt's been selling this game all yes. night. And you know what? You're right. If you're an Ottawa Red Black fan at home watching this game, I mean, you just have to say thank you. Thank you, because this has been a long season so far, but they yep. put together some really nice offensive drives and some great defense as well, and their special teams at the end there. But let's talk about Nick Arbuckle for a second here. We were wondering, how much of a difference was it going to make? Him starting for the Red Blacks for the very first time. He's 13 to 17, 148 yards so far, Matt. Uh, yeah, um, Nick, I saw some amazing things. Uh, he had one of the nicest deep ball throws of all season I've seen. Um, and not the Lawler catch, but the mm -hmm. throw to Bahar. I thought that was outstanding. And we we'll have to take a look at it right here. Boy, he was just locked and loaded and just feathered this beautifully. And it's in timing and stride. Oftentimes, we've seen the jump ball way too much. But uh, in here, he just sets up the big man. And, uh, and next thing you know, they're in the end zone. Three play drive. Got to love that. This is what I like right here. A little, little sidearm drop right. ball right. down there. Right. Just beautiful. I like off, off the play fake. Reading the blitz. Bahar makes somebody miss. Takes it to the one. Of course, the five minute. Discussion about who had the football, and eventually, Bottle was in the end zone, Milk.
You called that you want. You thought that he was going to have a coming out party. I wouldn't say it's coming out. But it is. His, his football team. <laughs> this football team has responded to him, yeah. and yeah. he's making plays with his arm. We saw the arm talent there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kate, to your point, defense, special teams. We knew yeah. they were going to be They're, a tough out defensively. All three phases yeah. are going. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, nice. and this is what they've been waiting for out of our buckle, and not just Ottawa. Every team that had him, Toronto, Edmonton. This was what they were waiting for when he left Calgary, and now he's finally showing. And sometimes. You just need to be inspired, and sometimes a player can do that. You talk about Devontae Detman, their MOP, coming back on this team and what he does for this team. Not only what he can do on the field, but just thinking now, we have a better chance to win, and we know what type of talent he was. You saw early on the Eskimo, I mean, the Elks, they were punting away, kicking away from him because they know how deadly he is. Devontae oh, I Detman. like it. You like that. Yeah. So I've been working on that one all and he, night. And he puts them in veil position. So it's awesome having this guy back in the league awesome for Ottawa but also awesome for everyone else involved because he can do so much for the team let's put it in perspective they're playing the Elks and how long have they won has it been since they won at home Kate it was week 18 Ever? of 2019 the last time they won a home game right. it's been 12 and, straight well, losses yeah. and, and yeah. so no matter how you draw your inspiration where you're gonna get your mojo from whether it's get the Elks in in at the brick um, no yeah you got to find it somewhere and Ottawa to Rod Smith's point right before the half, this is the best half of football that they've best played. Half, best half. And he, both these coaches, I think, are um, are, are walking a fine line. And, and it's right, good news right. for Lapo. And just when it comes to the Elks, too, I mean, the one bright spot has certainly Kenny been Law. Kenny, yes. Kenny Lawler. He's got 104 yards receiving and just two catches yeah. already. And he, he's yeah. a special player. And there's a reason why uh, the Elks gave him $300,000 because of plays like this. You know, he makes a great catch. He puts his team in position to make plays, to score, and Unfortunately, they haven't been taking advantage of it, but he's doing his part. He's selling out. He's making plays. He's not afraid to go down the field. He's not afraid to go down the middle and, and, and take hits. He's a tough player, but they need to surround him with some other pieces. Some people are going to help him out because right now it's not much. It's yeah. not much on this team. Walker, Loxley, uh, good talent there. Uh, you saw Taylor Cornelius creating time there. He's going to have to do a lot of that because we've said before, Ottawa's got a tough defense, and they're tough out, and they're going to keep bringing it, and it's going to be a tough climb for this kid coming back. All right, Ottawa with a tremendous first half, currently up by 17 in this game. Coming up, we are going to discuss the West and how things may shift around in this second half of the West season. Night. It's Labor Day weekend in the CFL. Arguably one of the best weekends in this league. Friday Night Football has the Red Blacks taking on the Alouettes. So Sunday we have the Bombers and the Rough Riders. And then Monday we will be traveling to Hamilton, Ontario for the Argos and the Tiger Cats. And then the Elks and the Stamps wrap up. That's a fabulous weekend. All right, let's talk about the West now. And... You know, at the beginning of the season, we saw the emergence of Nathan Rourke. We thought the BC Lions were going to be right there at the top, which they still are. We got the Bombers, of course. You got Calgary now in third, but you have Jake Mayer as your quarterback in Saskatchewan getting back on track last night with Cody Fajardo and company beating the Lions, who clearly have some issues at quarterback. So the question is, it's all set right now, but Matt, where do you see the West ending up when all is said and done? Well, <laughs> As we know, quarterback play is so important. And uh, we saw BC Lions be kind of a different football team last night when uh, when they were playing with Michael O'Connor making his first start. And then he got injured. Then uh, you, know, you got Antonio Pipkin stepped in. And, hey, I think he's got a, a lot of ability, uh, but he's going to need some valuable reps to get that football team back on track to help with his uh, receiving core. But mm -hmm. I, I really I really think that Winnipeg is clearly a front runner. Calgary, I think, is pushed up to number two, mm -hmm. um, even though the record's not as good. I, I'm putting Calgary at number two because of Mayor's promise there. And then he's the best backup in the league in Bo Levi Mitchell. And then you got Sask. I like Fajardo and fine. Okay. And then I've got BC dropping all the way down because of that quarterback scenario and the way that they looked last night without Nathan Rourke. I agree with your number one, of course, number Winnipeg. Your number two, I think Calgary will slide up. 
I'm just reversing number three and four. I think uh, BC will be number three and Saskatchewan because of their schedule. Their mm -hmm. schedule is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Three of their next four games are against uh, Winnipeg and two of their last three against Calgary. And for yeah. BC, I know they play Winnipeg twice mm -hmm. out of their last three games yeah. at the end of the season. The last but I'm weeks. thinking Winnipeg by that time will probably have the West wrapped up and they'll sit down a lot of those starters so it won't be that much of a challenge. It'll still be a challenge, but not like it would be if all those stars were playing no, because of that. And, well, Saskatchewan, they'll be fourth place and maybe crossover. Could you imagine Saskatchewan and Winnipeg in the Grey Cup and Saskatchewan can't use people, their own locker room? I know people in Saskatchewan would enjoy this. Yeah. Wow. All right. You know what? I like both your picks, but uh, no one's giving any love to the Elks. You're still keeping the Elks at the bottom, but I think they have a I'm shot. Watching what we're hey, seeing coming here. back <laughs> in this game. They have been a bit of a hole, though. Down 17. We got more coming up right after this. First half stats, Milt Stiegel. Wow, what a first half for these Ottawa Red Blacks. Up 20 to 3. Nick Arbuckle is having a great game, but the story has to be Nate Bahar. If I'm correct, this is his first 100-yard game in his CFL career. Good first half for these Red Blacks. You are correct with that statistic, Milt Stiegel. And speaking of Nate Bahar, here he is with Britt Dort. Nate, over 100 yards receiving in that first half. What's working for you tonight? You know, I think we, we got a quarterback who's seeing the field well, which always helps. Um, you know, it's team team we saw, you know, six, seven, eight days ago. Um, so you, you know what they're going to be doing on defense. Um, it's hard to beat a team twice in this league, we, and we knew that. So just trying to take advantage of little things we can and, you know, make some plays and hopefully not drop another ball on the, on the dang ground. Well, let's talk about you've been mixing quarterbacks and talk about making those plays. Walk me through that trick play you had there with Evans. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. I mean, we, you know, we've had it up for a little bit. Um, in, in weeks past, they were a little bit afraid of some of that trickery, and I think they got a little excited to try to stop them. And, you know, we all know Caleb can put the ball anywhere and he's a running threat. So sneak out and try to make a play. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Fantastic half from Nate Bahar and the Ottawa Red Blacks currently up 20 to 3 over the Elks. We'll get you back to Commonwealth. Rod Smith and Glenn Suter right after this. Getting ready for the start of the second half here in Edmonton. The Red Blacks lead it 20 to 3. So a lot of work for the Elks to do in that second half. Here's Kenny Lawler now with Britt Dort. Kenny, you guys are in the same situation you were last weekend against the same team trailing heading into the second half. So what was the message in the locker room? Uh, the, the message in the locker room was, you know, bad news. We're down uh, three scores or two scores, whatever it is. But uh, the good news is we've been here. Uh, we've been here before, so you know, all we we know we know what to do. We uh, we did it before, so you know, we just got to go out there execute in the second half like we do. Well, you have been seeing some success with Cornelius in that first half. How are you going to carry that momentum into the second half and get yourself a touchdown? Hey, just uh, you know, just uh, believing in each other and uh, going out there. At the end of the day, it's execution. We got to execute, stay on the field, and if we do that, uh, we're going to uh, put ourselves in a great position. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Lawler's had two catches for 104 yards, including one that set up their only points of this game and might be a, a catch of the year candidate, I would think. Well, absolutely, and, and you know, I, I mentioned that first half that Lawler and Darrell Walker have been working together in tandem on the same side. And Walker hasn't really been targeted tonight, so I, I think Taylor Cornelius goes back to that. Get some big plays because they got a long mount, a big mountain to climb here to get back in this game. Now I should say, and I know Ottawa fans don't want to hear it, but six of the eight losses, Ottawa had the lead at one point in the game. Big lead this time, 17 points as the half gets underway. It is Christian Salisbury with it. And he backtracks, he spins, he's still going. Cuts back, Dan Bassambombo can't get him, but finally he is taken down after a return of 25 yards. Taylor Cornelius. Here are some of the things that went wrong for the Elks in the first half. Well, a couple big plays to Lawler, but Loxley for a first down. That was a straight drop, catchable football. That one just a little bit out of the outstreets hand of the receiver, and then the pick. And we're trying to trying to get it through Avery to Lawler. And so they begin. Bear in mind, too, their first three possessions of the second half last week resulted in touchdowns. They need that now. Down three scores and completing it to Darrell Walker. 
takes a hit too, lays it down, and Alonzo Adai gets across midfield, and a good way for the Elks to start this second half. I always wonder when they go in at halftime, and you know we have been in the defensive side of the of the locker room, and we talk about you know what the offense has done well and how you're going to make adjustments, but offensively, throw Walker walk over to to Taylor Cornelius and just say hey you know I'm number 87 my name's, my name's Darrell Walker once and led the league in receiving and if you want to just you know <laughs> I'm over here you know real close to you just gonna mention that over the middle again intended receiver was Kai Loxley Abdul Kenna there and Loxley wants a flag does not get one well let's take a look at the secret weapon who's who's Going head to head against Kenna, and, and he's played well. I mean, he's he had the drop early on, and this is just good timing to come over the top again. Another one that I don't think that Kenna got his hand on it. It actually hit Loxley right in the chest. And Edmonton only four for 11 in second down conversions. They have a try here in a second and ten at the Ottawa 52, eluding the rush, throwing on the move. And just beyond the reach of Loxley, the intended target again. Incomplete. Third down. Punting unit coming on. And John Ryan. Well, I called him the secret weapon, but he's got to try and make some of these catches and and you know and and come through for his quarterback again. That one I'm going to put on Taylor Cornelius, a little high and outside, but. Those were all for first downs. The three, two that he's dropped and the one that was missed there. Ryan Davis drops it on the return. Gets it up to the 10. Lucky for Ottawa just to hang on to the ball as he and Deadman were both back at, at opposing sidelines anticipating that punt by John Ryan. Yeah, Nick Arbuckle really settled in nicely. I thought he played a very good first half and I would agree with you know what you said and what the panel talked about as well is that that may be the best half of football for the Ottawa football team all year for the Red Blacks and three drives three times in the red zone and came away with three touchdowns which is an area they really wanted to improve upon and have our buckle has really commanded that huddle and nice accuracy in that first half embracing his first start as a Red Black 13 to 17 for 148 it's going to touch down on the ground as well he hands it off on that first down and not much doing for Ottawa. It'll be second down and long. Keep in mind, though, that he pull, if he pulls that ball, he's got the edge. He, I'm sure he's got that in the back of his mind. He registered it. That time he gave it to the tailback up the middle. And Devontae Williams tackled by Jake Serezna. Couple of yards, second down and eight. Let's come in there. That's a staggered count. Here they come. Arbuckle quickly getting away, completing it to Darvin Adams. A first down Ottawa up at their 24. Darvin Adams with his fourth catch of this game. That's a staggered count. Now, Nick Arbuckle does this on purpose. He, he gets up to the line of scrimmage. He staggers the count, so he looks like he's going to receive the ball, and he wants the defense to declare. They do declare that it's blitz, so now he knows I got to hit the hot route. That's I can't hold it very long. Crosser got Darvin Adams. Get it out of my hand because blitz coming. Darvin Adams, gain of 14, up to 53 yards receiving in this one. Including one in the first half that was caught right down to the goal line to set up a touchdown. Off to Ryan Davis. Turns it upfield. He's up to about the 28th. Second down coming up here for Ottawa. Well, late flag here. Deron Carter talking to Ryan Davis there. See what this flag is all about, but definitely one of those ones coming after the whistle. Objectionable conduct. Ottawa number 24. This is a 10-yard penalty, and this is also a misconduct penalty. Second down. Ottawa number 24 is Akeem Bailey. Yeah, no, I, I think you got the, the number wrong. Cause, cause, Ryan Davis. Yeah, Ryan Davis throwing the ball at Deron Carter, and it, you know, it's it's really nothing, but it's objectionable conduct. And 
Makes it a second and 16, and that's dropped into Adams' hands. And what I mean was that wasn't a mistake. And if you and if you're taunting or throwing the ball at an opponent, you're going to get called for. And and if he gets another one, if he gets another one, he's out. One of the new rules Im implemented in 2022. to run there for Darvin. First drop for Adams. Leone back inside the five. So the penalty helps and Edmonton holds and that punt bouncing back Ottawa's way. Mitchell picks it up. A 34 yard punt only for Leone from deep in his own end. Kenny Lawler we heard from him before the second half and the work that the Elks have to do. Two catches. 104 yards. Edmonton will start their drive in Ottawa Territory on the CFL on TSN. Some highlights we should just call in case you missed it. You might want to see this. Kenny Lawler first half. And here's what we're talking about. Well, two big, big catches. The first one was just candidate for catch of the year. Extending to go get it. And then coming back to the ball in this 50-yarder to set up a field goal attempt that was blocked. But as Milt said, he's doing his thing. From the Ottawa 50, Cornelius ends up keeping it himself and picking up a few yards on that first down. Kenny Lawler has been targeted in the last five games coming in 45 times and then already five times tonight has those two big catches. Rell Walker has now been targeted a couple times into this second half. So see if they start feeding the rock to 87 89. First yards rushing registered by Cornelius, who's been running a lot the previous two games. Second and seven. There go. There's the deep ball. enough for 89 is it worth the price of admission wow another one over the top drops it down and he has to go get this one the body control outstanding catches the back tip of the football secures it as he goes down yeah man those are his three catches 54 50 and 42 Highlight, highlight, highlight of the night. Absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Milanovic Litre on that first and goal is set up by Lawler. My goodness, Edmonton's down by 17, but that man has provided quite an offensive spectacle in this game. Well, different, different type of athleticism here. I mean, it's it's the same type of thing down the field as a deep ball, but he has to stretch out from behind him, catch the back tip. Did he just top? He topped the first one. I think he might have. He has just topped it. Man. Okay. He's giving Brian Burnham a run for his money. Wow. I'll tell you. Sure is. Here's Cornelius down. Second and goal. Touchdown. Darrell Walker, but a flag is out. See what the flag's about. Walker got his first touchdown of the season last week in Ottawa. Oh, coming back. But not this time. Martez Ivy at led left tackle. There are two fouls on the play. Holding Edmonton number 62. Illegal contact and receiver, Ottawa number 20. We're going to replay the down at the same point. Second down. Offsetting penalties, so a second and goal, replaying the down for Edmonton. Ivy was working against Malden, and he gets the holding call. He's right over here, and it's it's late in the process because he, he was in good position at at the beginning of this, but Taylor Cornelius had to had to wait for Darrell Walker to cross through the linebacking core, and there was the pull right at the top of your screen there. That was the holding call. Didn't see the illegal contact, but offsetting, you threw it over. 
Second and goal at the Ottawa four. Edmonton looking for their first touchdown. Cornelius keeps and he walks in untouched. Touchdown Elks to get back into this game. Another rushing touchdown for Cornelius. And give the home crowd something to cheer about while they can cheer for Kenny Lawler. I mean, 89 is, like I said, he's worth the price of admission. A couple of times in the RPO plays for Taylor Cornelius, he's faking it or handing it off to Milenovic Litre and not continuing with his fake. And that time you realize, hey, they left that edge wide open. Took it in. Castillo with the point after, after a five-play, 50-yard drive. We saw two weeks ago here against Saskatchewan, all the running by Cornelius. Ran a lot, scored a couple of TDs. Until that drive, he had not run in this game. That one, good for the first Elks touchdown of the day. Taylor Cornelius was a running quarterback up until this game. He hadn't run at all until a short carry setting up this, taking it in for his third rushing touchdown of the season. Avery Williams, the linebacker, plays hard to the play fake and the run up the middle. He basically commits. He almost has to down there in the goal line. And Cornelius has, a, has the corner to score. Castillo with the kickoff. 20 to 10 now. Down to a 10 point. Red black lead. And they are keeping the ball away from Devontae. They Denver. really are. That's Jackson Bennett. They kicked it to him. So Sports Center on TSN has 1v1. We would suggest our own 1v1. It's Lawler versus Lawler. Here's yeah. catch number one. Wow. How do you top that, right? Okay, well, you, you go right back. You go in the other direction. And you go here. One. V1. Which one's better? Wow. Now, Sports Center has the whole system set up for fan voting. We don't have that set up yet. We just decided to do this now, but well, hey, maybe we're, we're, like giving a little, we're giving a little suggestion for Sports Center. How about that? Lawler versus Lawler. That's tough to choose from. Wow. That helped set up a touchdown, too, and the defense seems fired up. Boy, McConzo, that rookie is in there again. That's what it does. That's what it does. So, like, plays like that from Kenny Lawler. Finishing the drive with a touchdown Taylor Cornelius walks in and all of a sudden the defense sees that from the bench and they go Come on boys. Let's get the quick stop Let's get the ball back in our offense's hands while they're hot. That's a great play defensively on Devontae Williams The running back for Ottawa and yeah nowhere to go there and there's an injured player S.A. Marabare 92 for the Elks you just saw him on the left of the screen there and it's still getting some attention and finally getting up now check it look out look like it might be his his elbow Robbery has a sack on the season Spent some time in Ottawa did former red black starting his career I believe with the Calgary Stampeders time with the Riders too first round pick by the Lions back in 2015 hopefully he's not out for long and console with a Great play on first down. Now second and long for our bucket. Try to take some of that Edmonton momentum away. You need a couple of first downs to do it. Enoch McConzo from Montreal played at Coastal Carolina. Second and nine. The Ottawa 29. Our buckle with time and Jack Johnson and the Feast Lion fighting them for the ball. Like they almost look like they shared possession there, but it's Johnson with the football. Well, simultaneous catch goes to the offense. So if it's that, and that's what they're discussing, I'm wondering if they're discussing whether or not this is a pick. Lion cuts underneath. Does he have it and then it's taken away after that? Or. Boy, they both have both hands on it, don't they? The classic example of that this season earlier. Remember a game, Winnipeg at Toronto, Demario Houston and Brandon Banks? It looked like Houston had the pick and Banks took it away from him. Ruling on the field is simultaneous possession on the play. The ball will be awarded to the offense and a first down Ottawa. There you go. As you said. And possession at the end of that roll around that they did. Nice break by Lyons, but... 
give credit to Shaq Johnson for continuing to fight for that football. And yeah, simultaneous catch goes to the offense. Seems like we keep changing rule, rules for the offense. <laughs> Get more offense in the game. <laughs> One of the league goals up to the 38 now for Ottawa's offense. Still with a 10 point lead, play action fake, rolling out to the right, throwing to the right, completing it there too to Ryan Davis, just shy of another first down. Picks up about nine yards for Ottawa. Boy, a great fake by Arbuckle here. He, you know, he gets he gets the play action fake in the full roll, so he's gonna go this way and play action, but watch how the defense is influenced. They're going inside, way inside here, and Arbuckle is out there with all the options. He's got his three receivers he can look at. He can run if he wants. Lots of time, all because of that play fake. So a second and short coming up over the ball. Caleb Evans been handling the short yardage. Has two rushing touchdowns in this game and has a first down there. Getting it up easily to the 50. So Ottawa's drive will continue here in the third quarter, but five and a half minutes to go until three-quarter time. You can bet on those short yardages now. Edmonton will be wired to cover down on the receivers. The big play by Nate Bahar in the first half. Tough for Caleb Evans, who took over late in the game in Saskatchewan when Jeremiah Mazzoli got hurt. He had been the starter until this game, struggling last week against Edmonton and the week before against the Calgary Stampeders. Nick Arbuckle in and handing off on first down and short yardage on that play Devontae Williams the ball carrier yeah you know I, I mean we, we're seeing this a lot in the league now like Bo Levi Mitchell and Jake Mayer and you know Cody Fajardo was they were discussing that with Mason Fine and Arbuckle with Caleb Evans and, you know I, you know, I, these guys are competitive and of course they want to be on the field of course they do but we're in the middle of a season and the time has been running out for both of these teams they're just being teammates now. That's all they're doing. They're supporting each other. Whatever it takes to get a win. Exactly. Dumping it off and great work by Niles Morgan, the middle linebacker after that catch by Williams. To hold him up, well shy of a first down. It'll be third down and five in midfield for Ottawa. Yeah, but you know, I think Arbuckle got a little bit of that, the wind out of the sails of Edmonton there where they just, you know, you just need a couple of first downs even. To just take the edge off of a big touchdown, a big catch by Lawler, a touchdown by Cornelius, and a little shift in field position. I'm not saying it's a full win for Ottawa, but. Tackle After a here, that's of 49, and now. that'll help the yeah. momentum and energy. Frankie Griffin back in the lineup. A flag does come out on that special teams tackle, Ty Cranston, too on Christian Salisbury. While the ball was in the air, holding Edmonton number 95 at the distance from the goal line, first down. And a penalty to boot against the Elks. Big night for Elks receiver Kenny Lawler with more. Let's go back to Brett. Yeah, I think we know what's going to be the highlights coming out of this game with Lawler, but his connections with Cornelius aren't anything new. They've been proving to have a chemistry all season long. So when I asked Cornelius about that chemistry, he said, well, simply, he's the best receiver in the league, in his opinion. There's no question about it. And he gave a nod to his ability to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. He also told me he thinks like a quarterback. So, of course, I had to know, what does it mean to think like a quarterback? He told me when he's in the waggle or standing off to the side, he's looking at the defense trying to figure out where they're going to be inside his route and then he's building his adjustments off of that and I think we're seeing tonight his ability to win one-on-one -on -one matchups and adjust to this Red Blacks defense. Well you're not kidding Brett and the Elks have two scores a field goal and a touchdown both set up by big plays from Cornelius to Kenny Lawler. Need another one before it's over. Little play fake throwing on first down and that is shy of Darrell Walker. I think he slipped on his break coming back to the football you know you go back to a few weeks back and against Calgary in Edmonton and Lawler was he just had two for seven you know I think right after that game they got together and they said we got to get this guy the football and since then he's had 30 catches for 557 yards and three touchdowns including two spectacular catches tonight 
Outstanding. They still have more to do though from the end zone on second down. What a big play this is. Gets it off. Oh, nearly a tremendous catch. And what a hard hit. That was Chris Osikusi, the intended receiver, and had a shot at it and took a hit and couldn't hang on to the ball. Yeah, that was an Osikusi sandwich. Ottawa break into the football and and you know when Cornelius gets outside here again throwing against the flow. And I've said this before but you know when you're a receiver when you get in your hands like that you're going to get hit anyway whether you hang on to it or not. And Ron Carter went out on third down and punt formation and just conceded the safety in so deep. And so. Makes it a 22. They don't want to give it to him. Lead, yeah. You don't <laughs> want to. You don't want to be punting from your end zone to that guy. So they wisely give up the safety. A 12-point game, and Ottawa will get the ball back here in Edmonton. As soon as you saw Deron Carter go back in punt formation for the Elks, you knew what they planned on doing. Because we talked about better give up the two than have a chance to kick it to a dangerous return man back in the CFL. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get his hand. I think he's only caught one clean punt tonight. And he had a good return over 40 yeah. yards on it. Yeah. The Elks want no part of Devontae Dedman back in the CFL. From the 40 after that safety. And a 12 point lead. Ottawa now. Good block by Ucumbre Williams to buy time for Arbuckle, but he still has to throw it away second down. Yeah, it was a good block. You know, that was you come very Williams trying to continue with the play and, and continue to help his keep his feet live and help his quarterback find a little extra time. Haven't said Jake Serezna's name other than the starting lineup tonight much. Battle the interior of the offensive line between Ottawa and Edmonton. Serezna's got four tackles on the night. He has four sacks in four games. Yeah, he was on the six. He missed a good chunk of the season. Former Red Black, big presence up front, but you're right. I haven't said the name much. Second down passing, completing two, but once again, the big pop on Darvin Adams, and just like we saw with O.C. Cousy, the receiver could not hang on, so an incomplete pass just when it looked like Adams had it. Same type of thing. I mean, this is this is Tristan Deku and this and the safety Scott Hutter with a Darvin Adams sandwich. I mean, he just he's going to go across the middle. Deku on the back. And here comes Hutter with a nice hit. And I mentioned off the top that he led the team coming in in defensive plays. And this is just separating the receiver from the football. With some rain coming down here at Commonwealth. And so Darvin Adams shaken up on that hit by Hutter. And he copped up the ball. So that ends a drive just as it did for the Elks on an incompletion. Chance for a first down, but Edmonton will get the ball back. 22 10, Ottawa leading it. Coverage of the FedEx Cup continues tomorrow as the best in golf compete for the ultimate prize at the Tour Championship and catch the final round. Action begins 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific on TSN and CTV2. FedEx Cup tomorrow. A little bit of a limp from Darvin Adams. Hopefully he can walk that off. Having a look at his left knee when he was down. Catches in the night for 53 yards. Richie Leone to kick it away. Low driving punt. Taken there by Mitchell. Dylan Mitchell. That's about five yards on the return, and that's it. It has been a thousand and fifty days since the Edmonton Elks last won at home. They weren't the Elks then. They were still known as the Edmonton Eskimos. A 12 game home losing streak. It goes back to 2019.
Yeah, obviously really difficult to build any sort of momentum. Victor Cui here taking over and doing a good job getting back in the community and doing a lot of, of, of really good things to sort of earn the trust of the consumer again and the fans, the football fans here. And, you know, in a city with a great tradition. Another deep ball. And he was looking for Darrell Walker that time. And that one is incomplete. One of the new Red Blacks, Damon Webb, former Saskatchewan Rough Rider, in on the coverage. But yeah, no, I mean, this is a this is a team with you know, such a great winning tradition and to go that long without without winning at home and winning in front of their home crowd. It's just, you know, they're and they're flirting with sort of a record in that regard, you know, and, and that's certainly not the record you want. So. But they're building, you know, you see growth. It's it's small and I know it's tough to tell, you know, to say to a fan base, be patient. You know, Chris Jones is still messing around a little bit with his with his roster and personnel. He's made a lot of changes as the season's gone on, more than any other team. Cornelius takes off himself. This is his third carry of this game. And he gets it up to about the 35, but not nearly enough for a first down. So once again, John Ryan will come on to punt. This is the all-time worst losing streak at home was Ottawa in 87, 88, and that's what I mean. They're flirting with that. So, but you're 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 seeing improvement. Same same with Ottawa. I mean, boy, their fan base has been very good considering their record at this point. But you take a look at their opponents coming up, and if they hang on and win this game, they're they're not far out of the fight. All of a sudden. Deadman, rare return, actually gets a chance and brings it up around the 50. But to your point about those streaks, Ottawa's losing streak ended against Edmonton at home last year. They beat the Elks both times in 2021. Oh, Kenny Lawler just can't yeah. see it enough. <laughs> they need more of that, though. Still a 12-point red-black lead through three quarters here in the CFL on TSN. Here's the updated stats through three quarters. Now the Elks had trailed by as many as 17, down 12 now after giving up that safety in the third quarter. Yeah, now Ottawa's got to figure out a way to finish and finish strong, and that means still pedal on the metal. So Nick Arbuckle's got to keep throwing it like he did in the first half and keep at it. Um, you can't, you know, one possession, two possessions even in Canadian football can evaporate in a second. So that's important. Now I think for Taylor Cornelius and their touchdown drive with the big catch from Kenny Lawler, he rushed twice of his three runs in this game so far tonight in this fourth quarter. If he can get outside the edge and have the option to run or pass, may open things up a little bit and they can make that comeback run. You're right. That was a big part of what they did, you say, in the last couple of weeks. Mixing it up. He's got the big arm. We've seen that, but see him run the football. It's been a part of their offense. Ottawa ball, first and ten. They're 49. Devontae Williams. As he drives his way up across midfield. This happened on the most recent return by Deadman at the end of the third quarter. Watch Chris Jones. Well, Devontae Deadman goes over there and he says, Hey, coach. You, your decision to not kick the ball to me today is really making me mad. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course, that was a complete accident, but Chris Jones, okay, he's up. Well, he too knows how dangerous Deadman can be. Well, that's a nice run off the left side. Was some patience because it was it was locked down. Devontae Williams had to be a little patient. It was locked down right at the point of attack, but which was which was off this side and then watch he just bounces back outside gets to the left nice move in the open field Good first down run All right, Devontae there Williams go. there you go coming back to the ball complete to Jalen Acklin who by his standards has had a very quiet game it's surprising that is surprising really is. I don't give full credit to Deron Carter maybe Carter's been playing well enough out there. Illegal contact on receiver. Edmonton number six. The penalty is declined. The gain is greater. First down, Ottawa. That was Ed Ganey inside, not Duran. He's number eight on the outside.
can see Ed Ganey on that inside cut gets cuts him off. Throw to the outside to Jalen Ackler. This is the fourth catch for Jalen Ackler for 39 yards to the Edmonton 35. I don't know why Ganey's that upset. They declined the penalty. Oh, yeah, it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. He got the catch. Two teams that badly need a win. Ottawa Red Blacks with one in the season. And in the final quarter, with a 12-point lead into the hands of Ryan Davis and a chance to add points on this drive. Good production there at first down and a, just a dart from Arbuckle. We've seen some really good quarters, really good moments from Nick Arbuckle and different teams, but... Great work there by Williams to break tackles. He's having a nice drive here himself with those carries. Eight more yards for Williams, who's in as their feature back with the injury to William Powell. He was 22 yards on this drive. Well, I think first contact here on Williams would have been short. Yeah, it was Ed Ganey. And, and that's why you don't get mad at penalties that have been declined and go all the way to the very next play. It'll carry over. And then he drops his head. Takes his eyes off the ball carrier, misses a tackle that would have held him short of a first down. At the Edmonton 21. Four man right out, oh, getting to Arbuckle who gets it away, but it's a little low for the fullback, Anthony Gosland. Yeah, I, th I think Arbuckle was throwing it away. I, I think he was just trying to get rid of it. He had pressure on him. And he wanted to he wanted to throw it to the feet. The pressure's coming from inside. For, or excuse me, from the left side, and it, it got there pretty quickly. So he's just trying to throw it away and save the loss. It's Mac Henry in very quickly tackled. Put that pressure on Arbuckle, so it's a second and ten. Edmonton 21, 12 point difference right now, and Ottawa looking to add to that lead. Arbuckle. Hit as he releases it, and the throw showed it. As once again, the Elks up front providing a lot of pressure. Yeah, hitting the back of the head as he got rid of the football. It's third down. It's a big stop because it. Just a push in the back is enough. Lewis Ward is on. Ward's kick sails through. And they do indeed add to this lead. Now 15 points Ottawa. Fourth quarter here in Edmonton. Big week coming up here in the CFL on TSN. A slate of OK Tire Labor Day weekend games starting with Friday Night Football. Red Blacks Alouettes, which could be bigger than you think. Coverage getting underway at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific time on TSN. Yeah, and of course the traditional one at McMahon with the Elks and the Stampeders. But if Ottawa can win, that becomes bigger against Montreal next week. And they got Montreal three times before the end of the season. Hamilton twice at the end of the year. So you know, I, I know these records are what they are, but there's lots of football to be played. Well, they're halfway through their one and eight. I mean, let's face it, you can't sugarcoat that, but they have to find reason to hope. And in that East Division, they certainly do have reason. As you look at an incompletion here intended for Darrell Walker. Yeah, because it's all about the team ahead of you and, and the, the top two teams in the East will still make the playoffs. The crossover only takes that third spot. That's it. Cornelius started at four for seven. He's now four for 18. Flushed out. Leon Lang is chasing him. Gets rid of it. And intended for Kyle Oxley. So no good there. And it'll be third down Edmonton. He lost a tire on that one. I think, you know, the, the game that he's had, he's just fighting it. And, you know, when Loxley comes back to the ball here, I think he had a chance at it. This is a pretty good sort of desperation throw on the run. Now he, now he ran out. I don't know if he was pushed by Bailey. If he's pushed by Bailey, he can come back and be eligible. If he wasn't pushed, then he was 
not eligible to catch that anyway, but he's blown a tire. He's had a few drops. Needs money back for his gloves. <laughs> well, that is, that's he's a, just fighting the football tonight. That is a third straight two and out for the Elks. Finding it away. Devontae Dedman, will he get a chance? Uh, yeah, he'll get a bit of a chance. No, it just oh. gets about a yard there as he's pushed out and the flag coming out as well. Nick Arbuckle, steady night, 15 point lead, fourth quarter. Paul Lapolis's uh, head coaching tenure with the Ottawa Red Blacks actually started here in Edmonton, the season opener 2021. Abdul Kenna. And that defense had a great game. Kenna off Shy Ross's bobble takes it all the way to the house. He had two interceptions. This may have been his biggest play as Edmonton was trying to score to win the game at the end. And Kenna stopped James Tuck. And Ottawa hung on and won it. 16 to 12. And Paul Apolis has not had many wins, of course. Fond memory here in Edmonton looking for another one here. 10-20 on the clock in the fourth quarter and a 15-point lead as Arbuckle dishes it off to Devontae Williams who little stutter step looks like he has enough for a first down. Yeah, big drive still to a, a two possession game and that's why that stop by Edmonton was important and LaPolice knows that they've had leads before this season and seen them disappear late in the fourth quarter. So it's always a good start to get that First down on when you're backed up in your own end. Gain of 15, Williams having a very solid second half for Ottawa up to the 29. Handing off the 31. Okay. And that Devontae's been busy. The other one has not, but. Yeah, Williams is, has got a little bit of a game going, doesn't he? 10 carries now for, well, actually, that'll be his 11th. 50 yards rushing. It's important to get him going now in the fourth to try and grind the time down as well. But now the second long passing down, you know, if, if I'm Ottawa, I'm going to the matchup with Jalen Acklin. And, and Acklin has been super quiet by his standards tonight. Well, he's been targeted five times. He's in the boundary with Theron Carter up at the top. Arbuckle. Can't look that way because he doesn't have time. Coney Ely takes Nick Arbuckle down on that second down play. And so the Elks defense holds and they'll be getting the ball back. First sack for Edmonton of Nick Arbuckle in this game. Boy, the Red Blacks are flirting here with it because, you know, they, they've got to get a little more aggressive with this. Get back to that. Well, that's just good one-on-one -on -one off the edge, isn't it? For Coney Ely. Got to get back to pushing it. Those three or four series for the Red Blacks where our buckle was just on the money. This looks like they're playing not to lose right now. 56-yard punt, Leone. Here's a big return for Dylan Mitchell. Inside the Ottawa 45. The Elks have really wanted to improve their return game. That's the best one yet by the newcomer, Dylan Mitchell. Oregon Ducks, 2018. Ten touchdowns that season receiving. Great returner. Yeah, and they need a spark in, in the return game. It's been an issue for the Elks for a while now. Not, not going back as far as Giz. There's been others since then, but... Well, there's never been another Giz, but no. <laughs> every team could say that. But they need more of that kind of spark, definitely. So a good place to start. Cornelius, Ottawa Territory, pump fake, steps up, gets rid of it, completes the pass, coming back as Loxley turns wow. around. This is high school footage of Dylan Mitchell from Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, look at those moves. He, he was coached by Glenn Rogers Jr. in Memphis, longtime high school coach who happened to play here in Edmonton back in the 90s. Do we, do we have another returner in the league? Is that what you're saying? Well, 
the early return on that one. Look maybe. Good. Look good. Four man rush shuffling it off. Milanovic Lipre. That's enough for the first That's though. Enough enough for the first right. hit. Yeah. yeah. Well, you get it to one possession here. Litre is the check down. He's just going to step up, look for blitz. He doesn't see it, so he checks down over the middle, and then it arrives. First down, Ottawa 30. Down 25, or down 15, a two-score game. Cornelius is buying time and throwing it away. That's what Dylan Mitchell, who had that punt return, did in college with Oregon. Yeah, that's the big, the big year, 18, or excuse me, 1184 yards, which was a school record at the time. But it's it's just a good return and, and a good sort of debut for Mitchell if they don't finish. Got to finish to take advantage of that return. There's an injured Ottawa Red Black down. Lorenzo Malden just getting up now. We'll take a break and be back right after this. The injured player for the Ottawa Red Blacks, guy who's tied for the lead in sacks in the CFL, Lorenzo Malden. Yeah, he was he's coming off the edge there, working one on one on Ivy, and I'm sure what happened? They were looking at his knee. You see the sack totals now. Pete Robertson didn't get one last night in Vancouver. He was out a month, and he had seven to lead the way, and he's still tied for the lead with Malden, who's had a very strong season. O.C. Cousy on the receiving end there for Edmonton. That's big for him. You know, that's that's big. Yeah, that's a big one because it gets him an opportunity on third down to go and get it here. Just two or three yards to go, or just a long two yards to go and he had dropped him. He did a couple of well one big drop in particular that would have been a first down. He was as you say sandwiched right at that point of the field and couldn't hang on but does there and it sets up a third and two at the Ottawa 22 big third down Elks down 15 needing it here at a shotgun Loxley in keeps it himself has that and more Come inside the five and he drops down at the one yard line 21 yards and that's the versatility we talked about in slot back slash quarterback Kyle Loxley I think he hurt his shoulder but it was a big play and, and again like you're allowed to play two quarterbacks on the field at the same time now I'm surprised that more offensive coordinators haven't got creative with that especially with athletic players like Kai Loxley. Now he's he's fought the ball as a receiver tonight. This is yet another way to get him there, and he got it right down on the goal line. Well beyond first down territory. First and goal on the one. I understand Ottawa hearing from the command center that the Red Blacks were short a man on defense on that play. It goes down to the one, and the Elks have a great chance to punch it into the end zone. Another injured Edmonton player getting attention now just that was Loxley on the shore. Oh, yeah, that is, of course, Kyle Loxley who was the, the ball carrier. So a chance here for the Elks to get within a touchdown. 526 on the clock here in the fourth quarter at Commonwealth. Favoring that left side to yeah. Some applause here. Take a look again at the play right at the end of that play. Shahid Salmon coming in trying to swat the ball away. So here we go. First and goal Cornelius trying to push his way through for his second touchdown of this game. And we got him at Commonwealth. The, Esk the Elks are coming back.
Well, Loxley on third down, third and three. That was the uh, the Red Blacks' chance to get the stop there, get the ball back. They don't get it done. A nice run by Loxley off the edge on that play action fake, and they're going to stay out and go for two. They need a two-point conversion at one point, either now or later, going for it now to know what they have to deal with later on. 25-16. So a nine-point difference, trying to reduce it to seven. I take the single here and then. And then make it a one-score game. Well, let's see. For Walker, no, stays a two-score game. Ranthony Tejada on the coverage of Walker, and it's still a nine-point Ottawa lead. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if, uh, I think Darrell Walker wants a challenge here. At least he's trying to signal it. He's trying to signal it to Chris Jones because he felt he was held on this fade route. And I thought there was a little jersey pull, and it is gonna be challenged now by Chris Jones. Challenge flag coming out for Jones and the Elks on Ranthony Tejada. Edmonton is challenging the previous play for defensive pass interference. The play will be reviewed. Before that moment, did see a tug in the jersey of Darrell Walker by Tejada. Well, this will be as good as yeah you can see the, the that's four or five steps now the jersey doesn't pull away from him but you could see he's grabbed a handful of jersey Chris Jones in Edmonton has a history of significant challenges against Ottawa. Remember the Grey Cup in 2015? Yeah. Down near the end, it was a challenge on a play that went his way, and they ultimately went in for the, the winning points in that close game against the Ottawa Red Blacks in just their second year of existence. Yeah, I, I think this can be interference. Look how tight that Darrell Walker's jersey is, too. You're not going to see that the the jersey pull away from his body that much anyway, but you clearly see he had a handful of it for four or five steps. After review by the command center, there is defensive pass interference on Ottawa number 16. The foul occurred in goal. The ball will be placed on the one yard line and we're going to retry. So yes, DPI, and they'll try again to get the the two points that would make it a seven-point game. Cornelius still in the short yardage play, pushing his way through. He had the touchdown, and he takes care of the two as well. And so yes, indeed, it is a seven-point game now. At one point, the Elks were down 17. 25-18 to score. Ottawa still leading. And a similar play to the touchdown for Taylor Cornelius going for two. Boy, almost identical, isn't it, to the touchdown. The pass interference puts it on the one-yard line well across the goal line. And we've got a one-possession game. And a good challenge for Chris Jones. You know, and, and back to the Red Blacks for a second. Because now, you know, again, they've been flirting with it. They've been playing not to lose. And teams that have had, you know, confidence issues, teams that have only won one game at this point in the season, that's going to happen. I mean, if you, you got to earn it, especially in the Canadian Football League, all the way up to the final whistle. So this is a, a monster drive for Nick Arbuck. And I, I'm just, I'm still surprised that, that that guy he was talking to, that Coach Lapolis was talking to, Jalen Acklin, they haven't got him more involved. Just the four catches and five targets for 39 yards for their top receiver, Jalen Acklin. And that seems high because he's, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's you been just a, haven't noticed him. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not, not big plays, and he's been a big play receiver in the CFL this year. But not seeing it. And some pressure is on that team with the newcomer Devontae Dedman back in Ottawa after being let go by the Miami Dolphins and happy to be back with the Red Blacks. Not Just not getting close. his chances. No they are kicking away from him, not letting him touch the ball. Happy to kick it shorter. That's in the hands 
That's the second kick return of the night for defensive lineman Kenny Onyeka on special teams. Nick Arbuckle, his first start as a member of the Red Blacks, his three previous starts this season were with Edmonton, and those are his numbers. When you kick away from a returner like that, sometimes you get in trouble with field position, and they have excellent field position, the Red Blacks, because of the decision to keep it away from Devontae Dedman. But that just goes to show how much they don't want Dedman touching the ball as well. But you're right, a good place to start. 47. They're coming. He gets rid of it. Has a receiver, but back in time to knock it away nicely is the veteran Ed Gainey. Breaks that one up. Intended for Darvin Adams. Arbuckle gets it out of there. He's got pressure. Chris Jones has been famous for this throughout his career defensively. Has sent a lot of different looks. Pressure. They got every gap filled up. Darvin Adams on the corner route, and that's Ed Ganey, the veteran, playing from cushion. Meanwhile, Jalen Acklin's wide open at the marker. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that alone now. <laughs> you made your point. Ottawa 12 for 22 and second down conversion, second and 10 from their 47. Under four minutes to go. Looking down to the right deep this time. For Jalen Acklin has the ball and his biggest catch of the night. Well, they waited until he flopped to the wide field. Now this. This is Ottawa trying to hustle the line of scrimmage right now. I'm, I'm not sure if he if he makes this catch or it, I mean, it's a great effort. I'm not sure if he makes it or if the ball touches the turf and he uses the turf to help him make it. That right arm looked like it may have been underneath it. You do see a touch challenge flag out again for Chris Jones when his last one on the pass interference and the two point conversion try. And you, the 35 yard catch if it's allowed to stand but it is being challenged now It's Ackland coming down. You did see the ball hit the turf as he comes down. Edmonton is challenging the previous play for an incomplete pass. They believe the ball hit the ground. The play will be reviewed. Well, let's see. You can't use the ground. You can't use the turf to help you make the catch. Now, it looks like he has control, but I don't think there's any question the ball the ball hits the ground and it's moving around in his hands. I, I think this is going to be overturned. I wondered about that, too, that not only does it make contact, but seems to come loose again once it's down right there on the ground. And I mean, it is. It is an outstanding attempt. It by really Ackland. is. And, you know, they waited till he gets to the wide field and is working on on Lyon. He's been matched up on the short side with Carter all night. That was right down the, the line from the Elks bench as well. So Chris Jones would have had a really good angle at that. I think they're going to take this off the board. They're moving the yardsticks back to the original line of scrimmage. Looks like another successful challenge for Chris Jones. Yeah, and that was a that was a big play down the field. After so. review by the command center, the ruling in the field is overturned to an incomplete pass. That was the clock. The clock will be put at three minutes and fifty seconds. That was uh, a thirty-five yard. Thirty-five yards of real estate at stake, and that's. Two excellent challenges hey, so by Chris Jones. Jones. Which would have put an Ottawa in great shape to make it a two-score game again with absolutely very little time to go now. Don't go by. There we go. 350. So under four minutes to go. And still the one-score game, and Ottawa is forced to punt it away. Richie Leone standing inside his 35. Two returners back. In Mitchell and Salisbury for the Elks. Mitchell had a good return last time. It's heading his way now, running in to catch it. 38 yard punt and going backwards now. Keeps going backwards. Pulled down there by Shahid Salmon inside the Edmonton 15. 
But that gives you a glimpse of that Acklin attempt. Gives you a glimpse of why I, you know, been harping on the fact tonight that just underused. But now it's on Taylor Cornelius. I mean, there, there's time before the three minute warning for two or three more possessions for the Elks, but want to shift the field position at the very least here. But it's on the line. You got the ball in your hands. You got a one possession game, a chance to go down and tie it up. They need a touchdown. Ottawa's been in control of this game for much of it. Leading by 17 at the half, 20 to 3. 25 18 now, Cornelius on the run. Coleman chasing him, gets away. The legs of Cornelius easily cruising through to a first down for Edmonton. And I do see number 94 for Ottawa, Lorenzo Malden, back on the field. So he went off injured. He's up there. He's not the guy that's in pursuit. That was Coleman, as you mentioned, Rod, but. Good news for Red Blacks that Malden's back. Now so they're going to have to try and keep Taylor Cornelius in the pocket. One more play, even though it's under three minutes before the official three minute warning. Play clock winding down. Getting it off here for Milanovic Litre. Puts his head down. Right to the 30 and a short gain on that last play before the warning is issued. Ante Milanovic Litre. Head down on Frankie Griffin. The Elks still have a long way to go down seven. Well, what's new in the CFL? The game that Ottawa was leading decisively is getting closer down to one score. In the final minutes here in Edmonton, Elks trailing by seven. Two and a half minutes, second and seven. Cornelius gets away from the pressure, takes off again, trying to get to the first down mark, but he is shy. I think you close. I, you know, Taylor Cornelius must have saw this pre-snap. Two defensive linemen out here, two out in this direction, wide open over the middle. So even if it wasn't called, Cornelius could just take that run up the middle. And then where they spot it, they do give him a first down. So he did just barely have enough up around the 39. Cornelius getting down in here two minutes. Oh. Batted down by Cleon Lang. No chance at all. Now, now, even if they line up wide, that defensive line can stunt into it and, and do these kind of different stunts up front to, to try and take those gaps, show that there might be an opening and then take them, but that's just a great knockdown. Put Taylor Cornelius in second and long. Of course, three down football now. By the veteran Cleon Lang, who was part of the Red Blacks when they won the Grey Cup six years ago. Second and ten. Four man rush. Time to get it away. Oh. No. Intended for Darrell Walker. And that oh, one's broken boy. up. That was a monster hit. Avery Williams, middle linebacker. That's the danger zone. That is the danger zone for receivers. If you're going in there, be prepared. Wham! I mean, he saw it coming and dropped the ball. They're wondering why there isn't a penalty for that. The head on head collision from Avery Williams to Darrell Walker. That definitely made contact. I mean, it looked like it was intentional. It looked like he was leading with his shoulder, but the helmets did collide. There's no question about that. Here we go. Third down. This is it. Elks. Cornelius gets away for a moment. Oh, Can he get know. the first down? Frankie Griffin says no. And a turnover on downs for the Ottawa Red Blacks, who will take over now with 147 to go and a seven-point lead. And Mike Benavides, the defensive coordinator for Ottawa. Pumps his fist.
Well, they've been wanting to get Frankie Griffin back in the lineup for quite some time now. I mean, they really missed him. He's that's his sixth tackle and biggest of the night for 28. Quietly put together a really good game tonight defensively and. Flags are down after the fact. More discussion for the folks in stripes. With penalties here. And as it stands, Ottawa football after the third down gamble fails for Edmonton. It was right on the bubble two time wise. I think they started that third down play at 202. You know, and I and I said three down football and in a one possession game. Both teams have one time out left. It's right on the bubble. Right like if, if, it, if it's if it's 230, you probably punt it away. Right. And you have one time out, but at two, you go for it on third down, and Taylor Cornelius couldn't get there. I'm sure what they're discussing now. I mean, he was down. It, all this stuff happened after the fact. So it's it's Ottawa ball. It's just, I guess, where they're going to place the ball, depending on the penalties after the whistle. Which, by the way, <laughs> they've got to go. I mean, this is a game flow issue. Not sure what the discussion's about. Here's Andre Pru now. All infractions occurred after the play. By rule, Ottawa will, will have the ball. There's three fouls. Two objectionable conduct against Ottawa and a major foul, number 68, Edmonton. We're going to go back five yards. It's going to be first down Ottawa, and the three fouls are misconduct fouls. So after all of that, the headliner here is Ottawa football. A little further back to start, but the important thing for the Red Blacks, it's theirs and a seven-point lead and 147 on the clock. Five yards wasn't worth the five minutes, but I'll tell you what. Ottawa basically got 20-second huddles. Still, they're still going to run the ball. They're going to run their offense, I believe. They'd feel a whole lot more comfortable if they could get it within range for Lewis Ward and make it a two-store game. But it's all run here. Caleb Evans, Monte Williams, all run. Williams has it. A couple of yards. Will be a second and long set up here for Ottawa. Now Chris Jones has one timeout. Not going to use it here. It doesn't look like. It's, th there's still enough time. I mean, that you. This is our buckles getting back out there to run a regular second and eight play off that play sheet from Coach La Police. There's Lewis Ward. Had a tough week last week. When he missed a couple against Edmonton, and it's crazy to say this, but among active kickers, has the lowest success rate in field goals in the CFL for one of the most consistent in history. Pressure on the sack. They take a sack. Wow. A terrible result for Ottawa. All things considered here, getting pushed back and having to kick it away, Edmonton will get the ball back. Timeout. With Edmonton. 120 in the clock. And now. Chris Jones calls his timeout. Now he's got some time to get the football back. The ball won't, or the clock won't start until the snap of the football. He gets time to get it back with about, you know, maybe just over a minute to go here. You know, and that, there was some indecision on the sideline for the Ottawa Red Blacks through that series. I mean, they should have been prepared to either go ahead and try to normally get a first down with a minute 43 to go, or run the ball twice and kick it deep 
But that indecision got our buckle out. They didn't look like they were set. Obviously, it didn't work out. The protection wasn't there, and he takes a sack. And how about this line for rookie linebacker Enoch McConzo? Seven tackles, one forced fumble, and now a big sack. Edmonton still down, but they would at least get a chance to get the ball back down a touchdown. Well, and like you said, there's a, a newcomer on the block, a Dylan Mitchell. He wants to make a splash. Now's the time. This would be his opportunity. McKenna Henry getting helped off. Favoring his, and can't make it, favoring his right leg there. Or was he instructed to just go down and, yes, he is hurt. I'm not suggesting he's faking it, but I think they were still organizing something special teams-wise on the sideline there and just waved him and said, just stay on the field for two more, for a minute or two more so I can just get the, make sure everybody's lined up right. Dylan Mitchell, Christian Salisbury, both recent additions by the Elks after they let go Charles Nelson, who had been the returner all season long. And they're setting up for a return when you've got two guys back there. If you're gonna if you're gonna set up a block and try to block the kick, you, you're only gonna put one back. So they got two for the return, and, and you can see by the alignment of the Elks that they're 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 playing at some depth there to try and pick up their blocks for their returners. Richie Leone, the punt it away, and the Elks will have one more chance. And take a penalty here. For a 47, cutting it back. Taken down. Gets it up across the 25. Mitchell and Taylor Cornelius coming out. They need a touchdown drive in just over a minute. There's time. You need a chunk play here, about 25 yards. Doesn't have to be this one, but it, 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 you need one in this series, obviously. You know that Red Blacks are gonna are gonna back off and give you a little bit more room, the receivers, so that they don't get beaten, get let let Kenny Lawler in behind them. You almost think that Mike Benavides want to shift and maybe get a die of safety over to help out on Lawler's side, because that would be the guy defensively that I'd be trying to double team here. You're saying Lawler's capable of a big play? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm kind of suggesting that he can make a big play or two, yes. How oh, he could make two, especially, and they still need another. They need more from Kenny Lawler now. Edmonton 26. Four to the right, looking that way. Shorter receiver, Mitchell. Dancing around, trying to make a miss, and he still gets a few extra yards after the catch. And yeah. time is at a premium here, just under a minute to go. Yeah, Dylan Mitchell has got to understand, though, that the clock is as important as those yards that he just gained. So, you know, I mean, yeah, I like the second effort. He's a new guy. He wants to make an impression, but you get wrapped up like that, get down and save a few seconds. 55 seconds. Short one again. Milanovic, Lee Trey, and a great defensive play. Another one by Patrick Levels coming in to take him down. And inbounds, well inbounds. So now they got to get to the line of scrimmage, the Elks, and, and get this play called without using up too much time. Second and 10. Cornelius. Has time. Oh, off the hands of Milanovic Litre that time. Might have had a shot at a first down. That was up around the 45. As he takes a knee. And it'll all come down to this. I'm just scanning the field trying to find Kenny Lawler. I don't think he's out there. Couple of check down attempts there and Lawler is limping and he can't play in the final minute and a half. The big play guy we just talked about isn't there. Darrell Walker will be number two. Absolutely huge for the Elks and any chance they have. This is it from the 38. Pressure from the Red Blacks gets away for a moment. 
Puts it down and into the hand with a flag coming out of Darrell Walker, which would number 65 and meant it. be a first down, but holding a holding and penalty to holding push them back. And meant to number 65, 10 yard penalty. So, you know, great pass rushers, and Lorenzo Malden has become a, a great pass rusher. Sometimes they can affect the game for their team. They can affect the game for their team without getting a sack. And just a good spin move. And Cordy just kind of bear hugs him. So third and 20. This is it again. This is Hale Merritt. And this is it. Gets rid of it and falls incomplete as Cleon Lang was on Cornelius. And that'll be it. The fifth turnover. Another turnover on downs for the Edmonton Elks, who are about to see their home losing streak continue. little stunt there for Cleon Lang but that's that's a desperation time 30 yards to go and Cor Cornelius had to wait to get his receivers down the field you know at the end of the day he probably should have just loaded up with Darrell Walker on one of those on the short side and just launch it Enough to fray the nerves of Paul Lapolis, who saw a big lead evaporating, but never got closer than the seven points once they did have it. And it's been a long season. And for both of these teams, as the home losing drought does continue, adding the loss there for Edmonton going back to October 2019. But we've said it once before this season. And we can say it again. The Ottawa Red Blacks win just their second victory of 2022. So they get to within four points of the Montreal Alouettes, who they will play next week to start Labor Day weekend. Ottawa Red Blacks taken. And back next Friday night, Edmonton.